I was like, wow, barbar, barber, Hebrew word of the day, swan, let go. This is the Press the Hour. And <laughs> hey, welcome to the 123rd installment of the Press the John Investigation, Love to Drop Nation. Hey, uh, to all the cons, um, just leading the charge, dropping that drop, whether you're dropping it in our drop chat, whether you're dropping it, you know, any comments on any of the drop on any platform, man, we appreciate Monogas in. It is one tribe. Uh, no one expects nothing from each other other than. Your your greatest man, you know, just do your best, man. Do your greatest, you know. What I'm saying, keep the code, be an upright naga, be, uh, you know, what I'm saying, a stand tall naga, you know, what I'm saying, be a confident kind, you know, what I mean, and you know, just be a a constant conductor, man. You know, have have good conduct, man, and have good conversation. <laughs> We're popping off, man. Con means priest. So whatever you're doing, honor your frame and your shaper. You know, what I'm saying, be priestly you know be cold keeping knockers man and that's the purpose of the press of john investigation is to find your way to yourself we can't talk nobility uh without you being noble you know what i'm saying if i just talk nobility to a bunch of knockers that are not noble are not royal you know are not cons you know what i'm saying then the seed won't be planted i gotta talk naga to nagas you know what i'm saying i gotta talk con to cons i gotta spread the seeds and fertile soil fertile ground we all do so i appreciate y'all for being fertile ground man to spread spread this drive spread this vibration and i'm fertile ground for y'all to spread y'all drive y'all found y'all foundation y'all vibration man so allow a while to you man uh bye bye <laughs> so we talked barber it hit me right after press the 122 i said bar bar and then santa barber right? i'm out here in cali and we got santa barber and that's, you know, they got UC Santa Barbara. They got, you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful city, man. And I just imagine all these pockets of areas, whether we're talking Cali, we're talking Georgia, <laughs> we're talking Texas, man, uh, you know, all of, all across the plain, man. Um, it's just so beautiful. You just imagine what it looked like, New York City, Manhattan. You imagine what it looked like, you know what I'm saying? Um, so... Let's talk bar bar, and then I wanna, I wanna get some drop dropping on IG, cause it's just, it's just pop locking on, <laughs> it's just pop locking everywhere. I wanna get some of that, and as promised, I wanna get to some Tracy Let PDFs, cause she got all the drop, and we wanna go into some Barbary treaties, right? So when we talk barber, we're talking Swan, right? Specifically, we're talking Swan Knights, bar bar, a bar bar, right? So we're gonna get some forbidden histories of America, you know what I mean, but. We're going to do it for the wave surface because you already got your all this time. We've been, you know, getting our weight up, getting our, our workout on. You know what I'm saying? You know, now we strong. Now we fit. Now we we lean. We got flexibilities. We, we got speed. We got our power, man. So when we pop off now. We popping off of frequency. You know what I'm saying? Just surf the wave for real on my wave surface already. know, just like the swan here. <laughs> we talking swan. We talking nights. Right. Just take this one step at a time. We're talking the Knights of Antioch. Yeah, Antioch. Covera. Tolu. Tolu. Okay, okay. Slow down, drop. Slow down, drop. I'm just talking Anon, Anion, Maranon, or the Amazon, right? Khan. Okay. We just talking North America. This is North America, right? Specifically, you know. They would start relating the kingdom of Anya to the seven cities, right? The seven towns, the seven. That's going to connect you automatically with the seven cities of gold. All right. This is what they're looking for. These Spanish explorers, Portuguese, British, whatever they look, whatever they are. Right? They're looking for Montezuma's treasure, right? They're, they're looking for Mansa Musa's treasure, right? They, they're looking for the gold, right? They're looking for Queen Khalifa's treasure, Queen Sheba, and them, the land of Preston John. Slow down, drop. Nah, man, not for the wave surfers. Not for the wave surfers. Forbidden histories of America, a hop to uh, Daniel Lowe, man. Daniel Lowe dropping that drop. And we share our perspective on it, man. 
before I even get into this, man, I got to hit y'all with a fair use in your caboose bone because I don't want no problems, man. No problems, man. There we go. Can we go share some drops? So we sharing it for, you know, criticism, comments. We're doing some reporting, some teaching, some scholarship, some research. We call it recon, all right? This is cool. We can read your book. We can look at your, you know, uh, whatever film project, whatever you put out. We can look at that. We can study it. We can dissect it. We can have thoughts and opinions and hypotheses, right? All right, let's go. Let's go. Got to be said. It got to be said. So we're talking swans. Just jump over with me to like page 60 something. Let's go 60. Let's go 66 here. But yeah, it's going to be like 63. Okay, so we're familiar with this. We're talking Kalalas. We're talking promised land. We're talking swan. We're talking swan nights, right? It says uh, in this article, it tells of Kalalus meaning promised land. So when we talk Kalalus, we only talk in promised land. And they still can't figure out what language Kalalus is, but, you know, they are uh, translating it to promised land. In one sense, or Kali, <laughs> it was the X is the town, right? Which is the land of America. So you can do some deducting here. Promised land is America. Kalalus is America. America's promised land. Bang. Promised land is America. And tales of Septimania. We just got that seven, right? Sept is seven. Sept equals seven. So who's the king of Septimania? It will be the king or the queen of the seven cities. Now we're back to talking Ania. Ania, let's go. Okay. So they're going to pick up the story around 700 A.D., which we already know. Sylvanus Totex is already popping off here. You know, I'm going to share some great drama, man, but uh, I'm, I'm going to get the name for you. But a uh, good bro who goes into this, man, who's clearly been surfing the wave, and he's bringing some real heat, some great uh, concentration to the cons, man. So we're going to talk some Kalos with that con as well. But we've been talking Kalos. This is, you know, part of the building blocks. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we interpret it, um, you know, in our, you know what I'm saying, eyes. You know what I'm saying? We interpret it as these things are getting clearer with a dragonfly perspective. We don't interpret it through the lens of no hijack. So our interpretation is valid and it's always growing. You know, we're always growing in our flow, in our investigation. We don't have to reach a conclusion right away. This is an ongoing investigation. We've been doing this for seven years plus, right? So let's go. Kalalus means promised land or Cali, which is the land of America. Tells of Septimania, seven cities, <laughs> which is, they say, lower France. But we're just talking the Franks. And who's the original Franks? Where are they popping off out of? The Rus. These, you know, royals in so-called Europe over there have their foundation here. All this royalty, all this flow, all this more on more and this it's popping off here. That's why they're trying to put Morocco here or not, right? So it's happening here. These Franks are popping off here. We know the Franks and the Rus are rocking together, the Anne Rus, and they are protecting the secrets of Solomon. They're protecting the flow. You got the Templar flow, the original Templar flow, not the hijacked Templar flow, the OG Templar. Love to the Templar. <laughs> Let's go. So they're picking up at 700 AD. All right. The Kalalus records speak of the Adorus. Back to the Ruses and the Rosses, right? As the leader of many people who leave the Ramani, right? Pomegranate, Promised Land, Kalalus, or Fort Kalalus in 775 AD. Now, that doesn't mean they crossed the Atlantic. We're talking about a different landscape. You got waterways and places where there's land now, pre flood, yada, yada, right? So, we're investigating a Romani, Jewish, or Hebrew state in southern France. We could just be talking Canada, my not. Okay. He is the son of the first Hebrew king of Septimania because there weren't no Jewish popping off in those 700 AD in America. Stop it because now you're claiming to be the Toltec line. We're talking about a family war 
more and more. Even David on David, there's family wars. So, yeah, you see two competing sides of, of the David, Davidic princes. You know what I'm saying? You got competing sides of Israel, northern and southern kingdoms. You got competing sides within the northern kingdom. You got competing factions within the southern kingdom. So we here to me, in our interpretation, are seeing an example of a family war, family beef over this promised land. They weren't out to kill each other, but they were out to seize power or control of this particular vortex. Theodorus is none other than the Hebrew king of Septimania, the Romani or the promised land, Hebrew state in southern France, Franks. He is the son of the first Hebrew king of the seven cities, Septimania, cities of gold, also Theodoric, Ameri, which is where you're getting this America. They're not going to tell you where America's coming from. It's coming out the Makir line. It's coming out the Amari line. Or as the Moors would say, the Amor, Amor. But we're just talking that, hey, how that love. We're talking about being great, great love, great water, great men. <laughs> Makir. The mock is the mark, is the sign like the towel. You know what I'm saying? So you're talking about the, the mark, the sign, the covenant, the Makir. Tadros, the Rus, the Adorus, the Adoric, a Mary. Again, you see a Mary, A I M E R I. You see a Mary, A N E R Y. Nehemiah also, Namad. So all this Hebrewness in America, Managi. I'm talking about Managi. we talking about America. This is the forbidden histories of America. we piecing it together in our interpretation. <laughs> Through the Ruach, all praise to Wah. And it's a story that's never been told. <laughs> and it's been linking up all this time. And, you know, we, we've been growing because we empty our cups. We don't get married and tied to one thing. We see it, you know, from another flow. And then we, we put it together. But as long as we got the foundational pieces, we got our code. <laughs> we got our indigenous truth. We got our orientation. We good. We got our frequency. We popping off, man. We on a war path. The price is going up. Wow. A more been a more. <laughs> Come on. Or a Mary, son of a Mary. Let's go. <laughs> Known as Theodore, King of Saxony, and as Namus, Duke of Bavaria. These are all titles. He and his brothers were great warrior Davidic princes. You can't skip over Davidic princes, Managi. You're talking about House of David during the time of Charlemagne. On the death of his father, Machir Theodoric, in about 765 AD, Nehemiah Theodoric becomes the Western Exilarch and leader of all the Jews of the revived Western Remani Promised Land Empire, Pomegranate Empire. Of Charlemagne. Ah, oh, man. Rema. Hebrew. Pomegranate. Ooh, ah, ooh, ooh, ah. So what do they try to take you to the Arabic? They go full on running to pomegranate. You're going to go to Hebrew. You're going to run into pomegranate. And even if they keep switching these links, that's why Aqua Tracy let be PDF in these joints, man. I'll make sure you get all these on the press to pack three. I will announce uh, the pre-orders um, either this strong or next strong. They say weak. We say strong. <laughs> uh, either strong is going to be dropped, man. The, uh, Press their pack three, and I'm gonna try to get a nice big uh, flash drive in terms of storage so that we can get uh, whatever we left off. I think last time at 83 or something, you know, we'll get man, where we at 123, 83 to 123. How many is that? Y'all add it up, man, but it'll be that many. <laughs> it'll be that many on the drive. So uh, look out for us, man. Well, man. Get this stuff out of here. Get this stuff out of here. All right. Okay, okay. Pomegranate. 
<laughs> yeah, I like this. It's actually a little different version of the link, but we got some drop on it. So we got the Babar Hebrew word of the day. We got the Ramon Hebrew word of the day. All right, fruit of the boom. Fruit of the boom. So they took Roman from this, my name. My name. All right. Let's get real clear. Birdman and blood. <laughs> They took Roman from Ramon. So all this Roman talk you hear, you got everything to do with Ramon. Or the Ramani. The Ramani or the OG Romans. They just changed the vowels. They just playing with the vowels, man. That's it. They just playing with the vowels. Let's get the meaning. I would guess that when asked to name the fruit most closely associated with Rosh Hashanah, literally head of the year, Rosh is the Resh, which is the head in the Picto Paleo Hebrew. Most American Jews would say apple. In Israel, though, there's another fruit that has at least as prominent a place at the New Year table, Rema. So, their New Year <laughs> ain't our New Year, man, but uh, we understand. Reman, right? Re ma turn to Roma. Khan. You are the Roma, right? You are the Reman. You are the Rema. Hebrew for both pomegranate and grenade. Like granata mana. Because <laughs> we're talking about the boom, the fruit of the boom. Alright, it's explosive when you talk promised land. It's explosive when you talk dragon fire. <laughs> it's explosive when you talk Naga and Nagaville. It's like a grenade going off, man. You see how it's flowing with language? And then these Romans came with their, you know, explode their own explosions, right? So the hijack got their grenades too, right? Khan. <laughs> but the original Rema, the original Rema is you, Mana. Hebrew word of the day. Okay. Here we go. Hey, we're going to get in that drop chatter. Cause that's what the drop is, you know. We're gonna keep following this flow with Calais loose. So, we're talking about warrior Davidic princess in the time of Charlemagne on the death of his father, Machir Theodoric, in about 765 AD. Nehemiah Theodoric becomes the Western exilarch and leader of all the Hebrews of the revived Western Roman Roman Empire of Charlemagne. Again, Charlemagne is even a title that just means great king, you know what I'm saying? So you know, all these are titles, 765 or 75, Nehemiah Theodore reconquered. So that's suggesting that it was already in his family's possession at some point, like it's a family war. The American Empire of Kalelus. Kalelus was ruled by Sylvanus to Texas. Solomon the Builder, okay? The hereditary ruler of this former Hebrew ruled Remani. Pomegranate, <laughs> pomegranata colony, or they keep saying colony. He, he puts colony in here, so you think that these people aren't from here. But we're talking Solomon the Builder, right? <laughs> we're talking Sylvanus, Bravo, Ogam, Swan Knights, Barbar. So instead of saying colony, we'll just say empire. This is a Hebrew ruled promised land empire, Ramah. Kalelus was founded in the first century BC. All right, I mean that's that's up to debate because we can go before that by the Babylonian exilarch known as Sylvanus Ogam. And Babylonian exilarch, all this connects to you. When you hear Babylon, it's just saying that you were, you know, this is during this Babylonian Persian, you know, what I'm saying captivity, different things that we're going through. Even when we put um. Uh, what's the genie.com uh, exilarch flow? Uh, 
at us. Apologize, man. They trying to slow down my nap. But patient eyes. You know that. We got that vibration flowing. It was, man, we're on a warpath. So it's all good. Got to be patient in the warpath, man. <laughs> Exilar David. Yeah, we're talking Davids, right? Exilar means the leaders, right? We're talking about the leader of the Jews, leader of the Hebrews. Davids, the sixth, Sauceland of Babylon and Georgia. So when they're talking Babylonian, they're still talking about you. They're still talking David. And most importantly, they're still talking Preston John because this XLR David is the son of Preston John, the Pandy. You know, I mean, we've been saying it since Preston number one, man. Who, oh, who is Preston John? <laughs> Preston John, we on your, we on your tailbone, man. <laughs> We on you, man. man. I got respect for the president, man. <laughs> oh, man. So, David Sausley, he's the son of Preston John, man. We on you, Preston John. We on you, man. We, we on you, big fella, man. <laughs> we searching, man, because we know we're talking Kondai weed. Because for this XLR David to be named David, he has to come from a David. And then you go further in these genealogies, you got more Davids, you got more Solomons. These are not the first Davids, and these are not the first Solomons in your actual timeline. They just want you to pick up where they are putting things, right? We are reorganizing, reconstructing, man. They did their reconstruction. This is our reconstruction, but it's really peeling back the layers of the hijack. Hana. Is Anion, is Anna, Manana. This is the son of Prester John. And his queen, Lady Hannah. And the Hannah, Anna is also Anion, because they dropped the H. Anna flow. Like they said, uh, Miriam, was it uh, Miriam's mom's, was also an Anna, something like that. So Miriam is, is also a daughter of Hannah. She's also an Anna. Anna, Hannah. Of Babylon, right? <laughs> these are your kingdoms, but they're just using, you know, these titles. You know what I'm saying? So we dodge the titles. You see clearly when we talk Babylon, we're still talking the Hebrew flow, the David flow, the Anan. These are Jewish kings. Nah, these are Hebrew kings. They weren't rocking like this. Them people wasn't wielding no swords and having no sword fights man like what are you talking about <laughs> this was naga stuff going on man they, they weren't flying no dragons man you know this is naga stuff this is naga view who or who who or who's president child we talking Solomon or we talking emperor soli man Solomon, soli man <laughs> come top of the soul look out for the soul bone podcast dropping it hot Battle up. We in battle time. Yeah. <laughs> we got the war jumps flowing. Okay. Babylon. Okay. Birdman hand, bro. Still talking Swan Knights. Well, they still talking Babylon, right? Babylonian Exilarchs, right? Known as Sylvanus, which is Solomon. I believe there's a, you know, there's a possibility that this Ogon, also known as Bravo, is King David. That he's the one that popped this off, right? And Sylvain is Solomon the Builder, you know, are it's either Solomon, Solomon, or descendant of Solomon, but we're still talking ships of Solomon in America or swan boats. Very important drop. Very important drop. We still talking Barbar, right?
Baba. Ha Baba Reem. Ha Baba. <laughs> Baba. We still talking Baba. Okay. Back it up. Back it up. It's about to get good. The Babar is the Bravo. The Babar is the Bravo. Solomon II, Babylonian Exilar, Nazi of Mar, ruler of Sumer. You want to talk Sumerian in the, in the timeline? We're talking about ruler of Sumer. Then they put Sumer set in Britain, <laughs> in parentheses. Come on, Daniel Lowe. <laughs> We're talking soon. It's all happening. A great Remani Hebrew ruler, soldier, and ancestor of the Swan Knights or the Baba. My point is <laughs> when I'm talking Santa Barbara, <laughs> I'm talking swans, man. I'm talking swan knights. I'm not just talking swans as swans. I'm talking swan knights. I'm talking swan boats. I'm talking swan knights. I'm talking ships that are shaped. Ships that are shaped like a swan with its sail like the wings of a beautifully gliding white swan. Ka. Ooh, ah, ooh. I know I got this original recon. We didn't get it from nobody's classroom. We didn't have no big homie putting us up on the Babars and Swans and the Hebrew words of the day and the Ramani and Kaleidus flow and Anions and Kuveras. Nobody put us up on this, man. This is us and that Ruwak and the investigation you've been on and we've been on together, Managa. This is repeatable, observable science we're putting out. Repeatable, observable science with this wave. As soon as they think the wave's getting, you know, falling off or disappearing, boom, it's coming up twice as big, three times as big. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's the water. The drop continues to flow because the hearts are pure because we in pure water. Our intentions are pure. The code in the heart bone is pure. It don't make us perfect. It don't make us uh, infallible. Managa, it just means that we have a basis to keep coming back to, a code, a system, a moral flow to keep coming back to. So that we sharpen up. You go to the gym, you ain't gonna hit all that weight all the time. You ain't, you ain't gonna feel, you know, top shape every time. But you keep going, and you'll reach a consistency and a level that is supreme, as repeatable and observable science. And that's you, my nigga. We in that supreme flow. We in that <gasps> wow. You know what I'm saying? So we talking about bar. We talking about bar. Let's keep going. Hold on to your boot bones. Let's go. So when I talk America, when I talk indigenous, I'm talking swan knights. And if someone, uh, you know, who's under the title of Native American and this, it's no offense to you or anyone. We out here for the truth. You're supposed to be helping us find the truth. You're supposed to say, yeah, you know what? That's true. We don't know who built the mounds. Yeah, you know what? That's true. There is uh, these Kalelu's artifacts and these swords coming out of Arizona predating us. Yeah, there is some Swanite Barbary flow that we don't have nothing to do with this Barbary flow. The more and more war. Oh, no, that's that's you fighting the more and more war. The Almec. Yeah, that's that's you rocking it all back, man. Okay. Huh? Let me do this right quick, man. Let's see something over here, man. Sometimes I like to do this, just put things in the search box, you know. 
Kalei lose because we're going to talk some more Kalei lose, man. We, I don't think we ever fully get through this link right here, man. We always find something dope and we just go and we just pop off. But this is a link referencing this Daniel Lowell Forbidden Histories of America. We got it a couple times, but I don't think we ever completed it. But let's just pull it up because, again, we're just talking about here. The Doros ben Judah, man, sons of Judah, Davidic princes, right? Exilarchs, Babylon, right? Okay, okay. So if you were living in Egypt, they would call you Egyptian. If you living in what they call Babylon, they would call you Babylonians. I don't mean that you subscribe to what they do. It's just you living in what they their their vision, their their version of a kingdom. <laughs> It's funny when they say Catholicism because we're just talking Cathay after all. Katai, Kar Katai, but let's go. <laughs> yeah, I was hope I was hoping this was the one. <laughs> I was hoping this was the one. Watch this, man. Hey, my OGs already know what this is, man. Let's read this out. So he had a fleet of trading vessels known as the ships of Solomon. Start up here. Or the swan boats. The ships are shaped like swans with the sail like the wings of a beautiful gliding white swan. After the defeat of Sylvanus to Texas, the members of the royal family, this is important, were sent to Europe, right? Back to Europe, right? <laughs> Where they were under the protection, right? They weren't under no persecution or torture, you know what I'm saying? They were being protected by Nehemiah and his family because they needed protection from who? The hijack. This lets you know this was a family war. Yeah, they fought over the land. You know, they had their scraps and all that, but at the end of the day, they didn't take the members of the royal family and execute them. And that's very important. They took them back to Europe. <laughs> into protection and then when we talk europe again we're just talking about the indias the three indias and king david is the king of the world you know what i'm saying all these lands are connecting so it's not some white version of europe these are all nagas these are all nagas and this is all asia and all indias all right so don't separate these things like america europe that like all this is connecting you even saw that in the Antioch flow Remember the uh, Straits of Ania? The Straits of Ania. The mythical Straits of Ania. <laughs> it's the biggest they're going to get it right here. I always love taking a screenshot. I got a million of them probably by now. But you can never have too, too many, uh, you know, screenshots of this map out the British Museum showing the connection between Marco Polo's Asia and the so-called New Land circa 1530. Uh, yeah, man. Now, this map maker has placed Prester John. <laughs> oh, he don't exist, boss. And his idolatrous neighbors, because, you know, uh, Israel had a lot of uh, <laughs> idolatrous neighbors, my naga, not very far from Mexico. This is out of their documents. This is in a British museum, my naga. We're not making this up for our investigation's sake. We're not making this up because of our biasness. This is real, real time recon. You ain't going to get nowhere else. Unless, unless it's a wave surfer giving you. You know, showing you what's up, man. But other than that, people live in their pockets of information. They're not expanding. They're not seeing clearly. You don't see no North America on this map. You don't see no North America on this map. Why are they putting King David? Why are they putting Preston John? Why are they putting all this drop right near Mexico? We just got David Sauceland, Preston John, Roger here, Roger Chola, Jadaron. That means that's all popping off right here in so-called North America because there ain't no North America. <laughs> Is India superior? That's all I'm saying. That's all we say. And look at Asia. Where's Europe? 
<laughs> the Straits of Anion is connecting it all. Anion, right? The Anion Regnum. That would be Anion where Prester John is. Let's get it bigger, man. Warpath, let's go. You know, play, play, man. I want, I want the screenshot of today, man. <laughs> For the hundredth time. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, boss. So when we talk Europe and this war going on more and more, I'm not talking about crossing the Atlantic. I need you to see this perspective clearly. I didn't make it up. It's a 1530 map in the British Museum showing Marco Polo's Asia <laughs> and the New Lands, right? And the New Lands, they got Preston John on it in the middle. <laughs> India Superior, boss, Cathay, Mexico. Why are they putting Preston John by, the, by Mexico? What's with this India superior talk? I didn't make it up. What's with India superior talk? And when they bringing their people back to Europe and all that, they just cutting right back through another India. All these are Indias, but this is India superior, boss. You see the connection? Do you see the connection? Again, this would be Anion. Pay attention to this landmass. Anion. Or they'll put an H in front and you got a Hana or Hana. Hana. And Hana is the son of Raja here, Raja Chola Prester. John, the Pandian. We're going to get back in the Pandians and the Cholas, the Karas, C H E R A or K <laughs> K A R A, Kara. Or they put a Q on there, car with a Q. The Qs, the Ks, the Cs, all interchangeable. And the Gs, it's crazy, I know. And the Hanan. Hanan, got a story to tell. <laughs> Hanan is Anan. Is Anya. Wouldn't this land be named after the son of Prester John? If he's the son of Prester John? <laughs> I mean. But not. Antioch's in the exact place where they put Prester John. And if Prester John has a son. Name Anan, Anan, Anan. Prester John has a son named Hanan. They're gonna name the whole place Anya, <laughs> Hanan. I mean, look. Sometimes they'll put a C in front. This is this is the trickery. The word the word magic. They'll put a C in front of this H, and they'll be Kanan. And that's going to really mess you up if you are stuck on one-dimensional and you know information. You know, you think there's only one Canaan. Hanan is Canaan. But I'm not talking about the Canaanites under the Hamites. I'm talking about the Canaanite or the Canaan under Judah. Judah has its own Canaan. Ham got his own Canaan. I'm not talking about children of hand. I'm talking about Shem. Hanan is the son of Prester John. But when they put the C in front, it's also Hanan. And they can put a Q like Hanan. Hanan, they could just put C-A-N-A-N. Sometimes they put the H in, Hanan. 
these are all variations of the same thing. You can have Kana. You can have Hana. You can have Ana. Let's see if they give me any other hard hits on this Hana. Look at this. Anan Bar Shafat. 10th Exilarch. We're talking the same Nagas under a different title. Same Nagas under a different title. This is the same Nagas. This is Hana. Because he said he's still been. He's. <sighs> We're on a warpath, man. Hold on. Go. I think it's play play. Oh, man, we we've been doing this too long and we going strong. Drop don't stop. Loud wild look, man. This is Ben means son of. This is John. This is John. Yahan. Yahana. Okay. Yahanan is John. Okay, I'm gonna go back. We're still talking the same or not. All right, they put the other one around 10th century. He's estimated before 1222. I mean, they had Fountain of Youth flow. They, it's the same or not. <laughs> it's not. His brother is Solomon, who's also a Hebrew king under the title Talmas. And his brother is the Axelarch David that I believe went to war head up with Genghis Khan of Babylon, right? His father is Prince John, Raja Hiraja Chola, Emperor of Soli or Solima. His father is Prince John, so he will be the son of John. Son, John, Ben, Yahana. Even when they break down the John title, it's still Ania, right? It's still Hana. This is how deep this goes. Press the John itself, even in a, a English John with a J, it's still Yahana, Hannah, or Ania. Like Lady Hannah is his mom, right? <laughs> or Anna is the mom of Miriam and Moshe. Moshe's mama is Anna, Hannah. Anna, Hannah. Hannah, Anna. The kingdom, the title. And what did I say? Anani. Hannah. So whether you put the H on it. Or they'll put the C-H. Say it with me, y'all. Body bag. <laughs> Body bag. Body bag for the illusion. He's the father of Abraham Ha David. <laughs> He's the father of Abraham Ha David. So, you know, we're still talking David's even in, you know, this version of the same history. Because we're still talking Babylon. And what did I say? Persia, right? Persia. Persia, Babylonian captivity, right? That's going to bring us into the Nebuchadnezzar flow. Going to bring us into the Shalmanazar flow. Um, you know, getting all the wisest cons and, you know, putting them in captivity and, you know, marching us off to other lands, all that stuff. We're going to cover some of that in this uh, video that I'm about to share from the bro, man, who's really digging heavyweight, all right, on this. So I appreciate him. But my naga, you better choose your canine. You better choose your canine. Because that's just the con. 
C H A N Chan or K H A N Khan, right? Okay. 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 So when we talk Ania, right? When we talk Ania, back to the Ania. When we talk Ania, Ania. And Quivera, which is Eber or Kiver or Kiber, the Kiber, same thing. You could drop the K, becomes Heber, like Heberu is Eber. They put a Q in front to throw us off. The Qs, the Ks, Kivera. The Vs are Bs. Kiber, Kiber, Kibera. Kiber is Eber, is Heber, is Heberu. Regnum is Kingdom. This is the Hebrew Kingdom. This is the Eberu Kingdom. This is the Anion Kingdom. And we just got something from the mythical Straits of Antioch. You see these Spanish explorers, they're looking for the seven cities. They're looking for the gold. they searching for the seven cities of gold. Now you put a C in front, you got the Kana flow or the Khan flow. So you can also look at this like the Khan region, right? Because <laughs> who's, 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 who's being placed on the same location? None other than. The big homie Preston John, right? Big homie Preston John is holding down Anion or the Khan or the Kanan King. So when they're playing with it, saying, oh, land of Canaanites, there's two Canaanites. <laughs> All right, so choose your Canaan. Man, we're, you know, connected with that Anon, that Canaan or Anion or Hanan region you know all that right? this is press the john flow though, man the john is the yahanan is the ania <laughs> oh yeah is the ania is the hanan is the kana son of shafet ben yahanan fourth exilar Now see how these timelines is thousand years apart. That's back to our Anatoly for the Manco flow, how they switched, you know, all this chronology up with three major chronological time shifts, right? Whether we talk of three hundred thirty three years, a thousand fifty four years, or one thousand seven hundred and seventy eight years. That's roughly eighteen hundred years of time shifts. That's Scholar and Batavis did on our timeline. So a thousand year time shift should be nothing for us because we can put a thousand years back on the indigenous lands, man. To our indigenous Nagas. Rosh Galo of Judah. So we're talking we're still talking Judah, right? Galo, you know, something to do with Royal reigning king kingdom, <laughs> we're talking Judah, my life. And this is the same Raja Hiraja Chum, Jadaran, if he's the same father of Hanan, Hanan, we still talking John. Still talking John. So for somebody to be a priest king or a priest of John, you're talking about Yahana, you're talking about connecting with Antioch to be a John, to be a true king, you must be connected with Antioch. You must be connected with Kovera, Kiber, Eber. Huh? Okay. You must be a Raman, a Ramani, a Roma. You must be connected with the pomegranate. Because Joshua and Caleb had to prove they were in the promised land with the pomegranates, right? Promised land, Ramon. So it's this Salimon, Salimon the builder, has a ships, has a fleet of swab boats. Ships are shaped like swans, sails like beautiful gliding white swans. After the defeat of Sylvanus to Texas, the members of the royal family were sent back to Europe or just across the across the Antia. One more thing, one more thing. <laughs> I got you. 
This is women together, man. We're just weaving it together. Right. This document by Godfrey Sykes is the mythical straits of Ania. <laughs> so these Ania straits are literally the point that is they're calling the Barren Strait today where they say the natives crossed over the Barren Strait. We're talking a strait of Ania. That's a kingdom, right? That's what Preston John is holding up. So when they're talking Ania, they're making it mythological. <laughs> to see any on the map, they make it mythological, boss. But all in all, they're looking for Big Mama, right? <laughs> they're looking for Queen Khalifa. They're looking for Santa Barbara. All right, we're gonna talk Barbary. Barbary Coast, Barbary Treaties, Barbary War. The Babar is what? Swan. But now you can <clears throat> you can reference the Swan with the, with the Swan Knights, right? Once you put the Knights in, this is connecting you to your royals, your nobles, your kingdom, your regal Nagas, you know what I'm saying? This is an emblem of America. This is what they found when they are searching over here. So much that they became an emblem of America. Talking big mom. Queen Khalifa. All right, what's Khalifa? Sheba, daughter of the seven. Sheba is Shimbala. Shimbala, Shimbala. They shortened to Sheba, daughter of the what? Seven cities of gold. Daughter of the oath, they say. Daughter of the code. Let's go. When I talk forbidden histories, I'm talking about mama, I'm talking about daddy, I'm talking about the kingdom, I'm talking about the family. Love to solarray.net. Let's get it. Don't dodge all these advertisements, man. It's just, you know, they're just doing what they do, man. But we're talking Queen Khalifa, right? Yeah. Talking Philippines, man. We're talking Ofer, Queen Khalifa and her island of California filled with gold. We're talking seven cities of gold. They're calling them Ethiopia in the Caribbean. Because <laughs> Ethiopia is not a destination. It's a place wherever you are, wherever you copper color cons are, is a place where these burnt face or really fiery looking. They say Ethiopia means burnt face or... Uh, Ethiopia means burnt, fiery, it's fiery like the dragon, like the dragon fire. Yeah. The Amazon queens, they say, huh? The black Amazon queen. Therefore, he was not the original author of Queen Khalifa's history. Other than the day it was published in 1510, we're talking about who? Montalvo, who was supposed to be having the drop, but you know, he didn't just make this up, man. This was already popping up. And we know we ain't talking African Amazon queen because there ain't no Amazon rainforest in Africa, man. It's just stop it, man. <laughs> Cut it, man. Who they call uh, the Delomi or, you know, named named Amazon later, they're naming them after Queen Khalifa and then popping off right here in India Superior. The homie, yeah, yeah. You know, the whole uh, woman king flow, you know what I'm saying? They always want to take us our OG, OG sauce, OG flow, and attribute it to Africa so that we can only link to Africa and not to our indigenous roots right here in America. Man. Black Panther got a link to Africa, even though they still in Oakland, California, man. Stop it, man. We still in Cali. <laughs> Cut it, man. We see clear. All right, hold up, man. We're talking Amazon. Let's 
to go. Get a sip of my water, man. It's about to get real fluid around here. Remember the name of the Amazon River? It's really the Mar Anon. Mar Anon, the Great River Anon, Anion, or the Strait of Anion. I mean, Anon, Anon, you're going to keep saying Anon all of a sudden. And they switched all the Anons to Arnon. <laughs> but Anion got switched to Arnon, the R in front of the N. And that's supposed to, in the Bible, you know, just research Arnon. And you're going to see how it defines the boundaries of, you know, between Moab and Israel and different things. So the Arnon is the Anion. They're switching it up because they don't want you in the Anion flow. But these Amazons, or we're just talking amazing. <laughs> Did the word amazing come from Amazon? It is an Amazon or is it Amazon? The Zon of Ama. The Zon. The Zon is the Zon. Z A N Zon or Zon. Ama is Ama, right? We're talking Big Mama. We're talking Big Mama. Mama Zon, man. Big Mama got the food. The Zon is the food. The Zon is the nourishment. Who got the nourishment? Ama. Amazon, or Marana, or Hania, or Hannah, right? Lady Hannah is Anna, is Ania, is Amazon, Khan. And these Amazons, these amazing, these amazing <laughs> Amas, they joined their husbands. So Preston John and his Amazon, his Queen Sheba, you know what I'm saying, his Lady Hannah, right? They joined together in the fight against these hijacks and attacking the Spaniards. We're talking black ass King Charles and them, right? We're talking black ass King Charles. The more and more war, they, they work together to fight the hijack. Just keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind. Hey, let's press the one, two, three. And say it with me, man. A, B, C. Easy as one, two, three. <laughs> press the one, twenty-three, man. Can y'all believe it, man? Hey, this is hot sauce, man. This is hot sauce for the matter, man. Hey, I, I, I ain't never been more excited to drop a press the John drop than this moment right here. And press the one, twenty-three. So you here with me, man? Throw I die. I'm here with you, man. <laughs> you surfing away with me. I'm surfing away with you too. Khalifa uh, 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 uh. has been depicted as the spirit of California. Khalifa has been depicted as the spirit of California. Ruler of the eye. Now they're turning her to mythological, just like President John. But if she was so mythological, then how did she become the emblem of America, boss? I mean, I wait, I wait, I wait. She's like, damn, damn, damn. <laughs> man, we already won, man. We did it again. We already won. <laughs> How did she become the emblem, boss? She's the spirit of California. Okay. You got the links, you know. Get get the drop when they took Warrior Queen, <laughs> Black women. We talking copper color cons, Griffins. We talking dracons, right? Right. Yeah, we're talking dragons, boss. We're talking dragons, boss. <laughs> Let's go. 
Yeah. The royal families were sent to uh, the other Asia, right? Where they were under protection of Makir and them, Nehemiah Theodorus and his family. The legend of Ogier the Dane, son of Godfrey Kadra, Dunde de, de Mainz, actually referred to Tawatha de Danan, tribe of Dan, Dunan, who are also known as Mananan or Maine of America. And I've showed you the maps that has Mananan right there in the four corners, Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, right, all that. Mananan is Maine, originally in the four corners. They renamed it over there uh, in the East Coast, right? Um, just like Rhode Island, we got the original Rhoda right there in the Four Corners, renamed in the East Coast. You know what I mean, so there's a lot. Even Albany, somebody left a great comment. Hopefully, we got time to get some comments. Where there's an Albany, Georgia, there's also a Gwinnett, Georgia. Gwinnett, and that Gwinnett connects to the Gwinnett. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta write this down. I want to make sure I get this Gwinnett flow. Gwinnett. Gwinnett. Gwinnett, man. <laughs> You'll see, man. You'll see. We'll get it, man. But watch this, man. Danan, Dunan, who are also known as Mananan or May. The Irish legend of Regamon also alludes to this family. Now, for some reason, the author, Daniel Lowe, takes out the next sentence. Or he actually, yeah, he, that sentence is supposed to come before this Irish legend part. I don't know which copy of the book he took it out of, but he took it out for a very good reason, right? Because they're going to start talking Israel, right? Israel the third went south to the Toltec lands of Mexico. That's why the Jewish can't claim to be Israel the three, Israel the two, and all them, because then they got to claim to be the Toltec. Then they got to say, we are Jewish and we got invaded <laughs> by Columbus. Nah, man. No, they can't do that. So he had to take this sentence out that is actually still present in the Michael Rorick blog. Who must have had a different copy of the book. What does it say here? All right, so Venus Bravo Bar, the legends of... Ogir the Dane, Kadra, Dumains, actually referred to Tawatha de Danan or Dunan, who are also known as the Mananan or Maine of America, where the. <sighs> this is what he took out. Where the giant ogre heads of the Almec are found. Uh oh, boss. Say it with me. Body back for the illusion. Why'd you take this out, Daniel Law? Why do we have to go search and find it in the Michael Rorick blog before it was taken out? This says where the giant ogre heads of the Almec are found. So two things. When you see all the ogres like Shrek, they are making fun of the Almec. The ogres in mythology are the Ame. Bang, body bang. <laughs> Two, this gives a face to this Israel the third Israel situation we're talking about. This gives you a face. This is why they took it out. Because the face, you already know. I'm like, you know what the Ame. Matter of fact, we're going to get this drop off the IG. You know what the Ame are looking like, right? <laughs> let's go, man. So, let's go. I'm fired up now, man. Hey, that was just the intro. Fall back, Jack. That was just the intro. A let go. That's 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 how we do the intro, man. That's how we walk in the building, man. Yeah, known as Maine or Mananan or Maine of America, and they put a period. Look at the period. But look over here. Maine of America. No period. It just says where the giant ogre heads of the Almec are found, boss. And the Almec call themselves the she, right? X marks the spot. X is the tau in Hebrew, meaning the mark, the sign, the covenant. 
they took the X and they made their own Tao in Christianity because that's their own mark, their own sign, their own covenant. And their mark, their sign, their covenant has nothing to do with us. The hijack mark is not your mark. The hijack sign is not your sign. And the hijack covenant is not your covenant. And love to Aqua Tracy Les. She dropped something in the drop chat about the secret covenant. We're going to get that too, Aqua. We, we up. We up. We're going to get the Barbary links. We're going to get the secret covenant. We're going to get this up, man. We, we up, man. All right. We up. You made it this far. If you made it this far, right past the intro, because a lot of Nagas fall off past like the 25, 15 minute mark. My Nagas, you still here surfing the wave? Just go ahead and put a number nine in the comments for the nine code. For the nine code. Put a number nine for the nine code. For a Naga. Let me know you still here rocking with a Naga. Let me know the price is going up. Let me know we on the warp path for Naga. All Mac. All Mac. All Mac. Where's All Mac? Where's the All Mac? <laughs> Where'd it go, boss? They say Main of America. Uh, that's nothing else to see here, boss. It's important you know that Maine, Mananan, Dananan, all this is where the giant All Macs. All Mac heads are found. The Irish legend of Regamon also alludes to this All Mac family. That's why they're taking All Mac out. Come on, Daniel Lowe. Respect to you, bro, but come on, Daniel Lowe. You took out All Mac. Because we went to talking Israel now. So now we can relate to Israel, the third, the fourth, all these Israels with the All Mac, with the Toltec. That makes perfect sense. The All Mac, the Toltec. And Israel, Makir, Amerik, where's the A? Just put an A at the end of America and you got what? America, man. They say, no, this land is named after Traveler Amerigo. Stop the capery. Stop it. Because ain't no cap on my number two pencil. Last time that I checked. Makir is Marig in the Welsh genealogies. Makir, Managa, is mixed Kaoto of the Toltec genealogy. You can't front on Makir. So when I say it's a family war going on over here, I'm saying mixed Kaoto. I'm talking about the Toltec war happening for the promised land. Because somebody felt that somebody else was out of code. Now, in the Bible, you got Solomon, right? And then he goes off, right? He starts you know, doing some altars and stuff. And then in the days where after Solomon, the kingdom is divided, you know what I'm saying? So now you got this division happening after Solomon's death. Is this kind of a reflection or, you know, which a reality of, of this situation that you got Solomon, the builder, and then you got this kingdom being shuffled around within Israel, within the David family, within the Toltec family. Titles, my knock. Grandfather of Tapuzin, Israel the seventh, Idwa, which is a Dawa, Dawa or a Dawi flow, priest of Kitsukawado flow, who is Joshua Managa, according to Gerald uh, Masse in the book of the beginning. So Kitsukawado is Joshua, is you know who they would call uh uh what one was Hawa Mak, yeah, one was Hawashua Joshua. You got Hawa Mak as Moshe, and then you got this Kitsukawado as this Joshua. The the Ketzel is the rainbow, the Kwado is the dragon. These Ketzels are these colorful birds that live in the cloud forest. The Kwado is the dragon, so you got a rainbow, colorful rainbow dragon, all right. This is Joshua. You put his bow in the sky. When you see my bow in the sky, you know it's a sign between me and you. We're talking rainbows. Yeah, but we're talking rainbow dragons, my nigga. Who left Cholula for Rhoda in about a 1000 AD. So it matches up with all our genie flow, all our genealogies flow. <laughs> Go back to Shafat bin Yahanan or Anion. 
He said 1,000 AD over there. Put 1,000 years back on it, man. Put 1,000 years back on it, man. You're going to be running into the same David flow, Moshe flow, and all this. Canaan, all right? Choose your Canaan. Choose your Kana. Choose your Hana. Estimated before 1222. Son of Raja Hiraja. Estimated before 1195. Genghis comes, conquers King David in 1202, which I believe was the son of Raja Hiraja. I think the son that went head up was Exilarch David the six, possibly. But you still got Antioch, you still got Hanan fighting, Solomon, you know what I'm saying? All this is happening. 1,000, 1,100, 1,200. They just find they just found us in the 1400, 1492, dog-headed Columbus cell, the ocean blue. Right, got it. Okay. We see it clearly. Yes, we see it clearly. Let's go. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> fair use, fair use. We're going to jump in a couple things, man. I'm going to have some fun. Oh, man, some good job. Some good job. I'm going to start it. Oh, man. Woo. Where should I start? <laughs> I really don't know where to start. Let's go. Hey, first of all, a hop to all my Nagas contributing. To us building our wall, continuing to contribute to be, uh, you know, constant and continuous, you know, contributors, man. A hop to the cons, man. And, you know, you're helping us reach the 20K mark. Look how we are. Please be the Nagas that get us over the top. We're about to make some great runs, man, to build this fence and to paint our fence. So we're going to need everything in the pot so we can just get these materials and make sure we got that. Everything to complete this entire acre. So, Brooklyn Jenkins, I see you coming up continuously, my bro, or, or my sister. <laughs> uh, I really appreciate you, Brooklyn Jenkins, man. Uh, Brendan Zavala, Anthony Largay, all my anonymous cons, and everybody, man. We've had hundreds and hundreds, hundreds of donations, man. 264 to be exact. So, to Wada, to all the kind. And uh, let's get to the uh, drop chat right quick. Drop chat a box. And we're going to get into some IGs. So amazing drop. Y'all checking in regularly, keeping our lights on, making sure, you know, we got enough for all the little things that, you know, go into keeping 432, you know, uh, keeping the water flowing. So the water to all your donations on PayPal. I want to make sure I give my the water eyes, man. Joy World, come right here and do it. We appreciate you. So we in a drop drop channel. All right. <laughs> look at these great drops, man. My, we're gonna look at this drop box while Timmy. You know, what I'm saying we're gonna look at that uh, right away. We're gonna jump into that right after the IG flow. Okay, and then uh, we got some great. Oh, we're gonna talk. Oh man, this is so much. I don't know. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. Tracy Led dropped us some great drop about the secret. Covenant, I think this one might be a really good one for the dismount. So we're going to keep that for the dismount. Okay. All right. All right. And out to all these cons, man. Uh, <laughs> I always try. I always try, Aqua, <laughs> to come back for the dismount. Uh, all right, Aqua. She dropping that drop. Here's some health drop. I got some health drop. If I connect it to Mama, Ama, Mother Earth, let's get it bigger. Oh yeah, make sure we ground it, huh? Keep your feet in the in the ground, man, in the in the soil, man, in the in the grass, whatever you're doing, connected, man, rooting. I've heard of it, it makes sense both spiritually and scientifically, and this video does a good job of explaining it and sharing the benefits. Then when making about our captivity, it makes sense why this regime uh or regime yeah, this regime likes us in cities full of concrete wearing rubber soled shoes, Nike. Uh huh, yeah. And Nike's a Greek guy. My jigger, we got an MHOE. Look for the MHOE threes <laughs> as we get our sneaker flow. But we're going to do it to where, you know, we need y'all to help us be a think tank, man. How to create, you know, shoes that have high 
electricity, you know what I'm saying? Shoes that are opposite of what they create, you know what I'm saying? You know, this is MHOE, man. Just look out for us. Hey, how uh, Moon, man? Is this Moon Man or Moon Boy? Did Moon Boy turn to Moon Man, man? Hey, man. <laughs> hey, how kind? Top of the soul. Hey, much of how I talk my nine and shot. That's all we looking for, man. Fat con dropping that drop. The mirror on the wall. Oh, man. Just go get it. I'm going to leave all this for y'all. Come in the drop chat. Get all this great drop here, man. Oh, you got that magic mirror flow. Sound like that press the job flow. He already on it, man. Realm of superstition into the kingdom of science, and that in the future the same will occur. Thus, the divine summons of the medieval trial by ordeal have turned out to be the effects of suggestion, and majority of the performances of witches have proved to be the effects of hysterical temperament. So that there, so that we are now in possession to comprehend the tales of the magic mirror in their true light, and to bring them without constraint into accord with the doctrines of developed science and psychologies. Uh, what they connecting the old the uh, magic mirror with the old testament y'all got it man you see what we're doing over here you see why we keep going aqua tie she over there with the uaes in the future and in space she got the space drop top of the soul all right we up man we up. oh yeah my jigger just drop that let go too hot go get it dropping on the drop man get all this drop time bad on i see you i see y'all Melvin Trey Kroger says the search for Preston John continues, man. We in the drop chat searching for the priest king. Appreciate you for keeping the water flowing, drop peace and power to the tribe. All praise. Say it with me. <sighs> wow. <laughs> Blue, purple, red. Okay. So we got some great drop to get to. I'm going to jump in this lane. First, I'm going to hit up the IG. All my knives hit it up with me. Let's see you guys dropping over here on the IG, man. Uh, come over here, surf the wave, because, you know, we have a fantastic pace going on. Every day I wake up to amazing drop. Every day I love sharing your drop, you know what I'm saying? So we're going to jump into this one here. Who's this by? Uh, I think this is American or Aboriginal American Media. A hop to you. Let's just see what we got, man. Surf the way. This. Oh, the Aztecs, they found it. They found it. 600 years later. Who who built this? That's a good question. Okay. Nobody knows exactly, but 80% the experts, they mentioned the Greek guys. It was another culture. Mm -hmm. So all this, the oldest, the mother's culture, the people in Mexico, Aztecs, Mayas, Toltecs, Zapotecs, and many more, they believe it, that Olmex was the number one. And what Olmex was the number one. I mean, what did Michael Warwick, was he, what did he uh, salvage from the Daniel Lowe book, right? When we talk Dunan, Tuatha de Danan, O'Gara de Dane, when we talk all this Israel flow, Nehemiah, Theodorus, Makir, Sylvanus to Texas, Swan Knights, uh, Solomon the Builder, the Babar, right? The Babar, Hebrew word of the day. It all connects to the giant ogre heads. <laughs> it all connects to the Almac. Then we could talk Israel, right? Then we could talk Quetzalcoatl. Then we could talk Toltec. Then we could talk the Rimon, Hebrew kingdom of Roda. Yeah, Redmon. Redmon, Radha Knights. Roda. Right there in Arizona. <laughs> Yeah, let's look at some IGs, man. <laughs> let's have some fun. Man. This is the fun part. I mean, you know, we all popping up. Hear it again. And was the Tormix? At least in the coast. In Veracruz. And, and this gives you a face, right? So this is why they took it off. Like, we can't put a face to all this research. We can't say the giant heads of the Almec are found. And then start talking to Israel, man. No, we can't do that. It's, it's, a, it's, 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 it's a little bit of culture. culture. Where we are. Okay. Did the Aztecs build this? No. 
They did not build this. The Aztecs, they found it. They found it. 600 years later. Who, who built this? This is a good question. Okay. Nobody knows exactly, but 80% of the experts, they mentioned the Quilquis guys. It was another culture. Mm -hmm. So all of them, the oldest, the modern culture, the people in Mexico, Aztecs, Mayan, Colts, Zapotecs, and many more, they believe it. That so if they can't tell you who you are, how can they tell you who you're not, right? Put it on a shirt, man. We're going to bring them shirts back, drop slogans, man. Um, They can't tell you who you are. So they can't tell you who you're not. They can't tell you who built these mounds, these pyramids. So they can't say they did it, and they can't say you didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? Just by default. Um, So when you work from that basis, you can't say I didn't. <laughs> and you start building up your case, building up your investigation for being original, for being indigenous, for being the Ibarus and Covera, the Ibarus and Anion, the Ibarus and uh, India Superior, Kalelus. You start talking Kalelus artifacts on them. <laughs> 700 AD, American Empire, Sylvanus to Texas, Solomon the Builder and Swan Knights. They don't know what you're talking about. You're talking Barbary, Babar, Babar, <laughs> Ramah. They don't know what you're saying. That lets you know there's a big gap in his story. And only one people, one tribe can feel it appropriately. Like Cinderella putting the shoe on. Only one foot can fit in that shoe. And that's you, my life. They can't tell you who built the pyramids. They can't tell you, Jack. This is a dope one here. We dropped, uh, got a lot to do with frequency. I'm going to play it in. Let you check it out because we've been on a 432 hertz. This is 432 to drop. And it's very important uh, what frequency you're tuned to and what frequency they've tuned us to. Let's get this quickly. Five twelve, four forty, right? So there was no effect. But now. Mm. See the effect? Do you see the effect? So even if they have 432, 432, the point is that that ball wouldn't be moving unless you were tuned to it. This is deep. This is quantum deep. This is dimensional talk, right? They can't affect you unless you're in their frequency. They have to pull us down, you know, uh, to their low vibration. They got to they gotta give us a new tune. Didn't it say that in the selling of Joseph, 1751? Love to let us find the truth, con up. Didn't it say that we had to give these uh, Aborigines people an excellent new tune? Take them out of their ancient love song? By taking you out of your ancient love song, that's your 432, that's your harmony, that's your hawa, that's your code. They had to give you what they called an excellent new tune because they think their hijack is excellent. But unless they tune you to that frequency, they have no effect on you. If they didn't tune us to Christianity, tune us to worshiping JC, who uh, some of y'all still call the... Uh, Hamashiach, right? <laughs> nah. Nah. You still tune to JC Hamashiach? They got you. They can affect you. You got to tune out. You got to tune to the creator only. The creator didn't say to tune into nothing else. He say, hey, I am your only savior. You got you to gotta come through me. Oh, no, you got to go through the sun to get to the creator. That's out of tune. When they get you out of tune, or even more importantly, when they tune you into themselves, that's when their frequencies affect us overall. They can't take down our kingdom unless they tune our kingdom out of tune. They came with missionaries first, didn't they? Come with missionaries. Why? To give us JC. That's how important that is. To disconnect us from going directly to the creator. To put us through this doctrine of going through the sun. Now you got sun worship. Right now you got a different soul, a different tune. They couldn't conquer us unless we were in that tune. 
They had to disconnect us from Hawaii, put us in their 440. And when you look at the semantics experiments when they play 440, the sand on the whatever medium, the iron sheet, the sand starts to separate. 4432 comes together. 432, you got unity. 440, you got separation. They had to put us in a frequency of separation in order to invade us. They put, they had to make it a, a more and more war. They had to make it, they had to put the treaties in play. They had to put tribes against each other. They had to put us against each other today, Bloods and Crips and Republican Democrat. They had to put the separation, duality, thoth, hermetic frequency, the 440 alchemical serpent frequency, the frequency of this matrix, the frequency of hijack city. They had to tune us to this frequency, you know, with the towers and all the stuff they blasting from the towers, whatever they spray, tenderonies, they had to keep us sick, blind, deaf, and dumb. They have to tune us out of our Hawa. No more dragons, no more dragon code, no more nine code. They had to take us out of our commandments. Rule number one, no power before me. All right, but I'm worshiping JC. You already lost. You looking for JC, you ain't looking for the creator. You looking for Yahweh Hamashiach, you ain't looking for the creator. You looking for Yeshua, Hamashiach, you ain't looking for the creator. Because if you were, if you were, it would be real clear, boss. It's the press to how. Hosea 3. You already played the harlot. Who's going to buy you back? You already played the hoe, but Hawaii said you ain't going to be no hoe no more. You're going to be mine, but for this time, you're going to be in solitary. Many days, because you keep being a hoe. You keep looking for JC. <laughs> You're looking for Muhammad. You ain't looking for the creator. They had to tune you into all these doctrines and religions. We're going to get this next one about how they did this psychological warfare, brought us these ideologies. We just say, keep it KTC. We know that all this stuff has been tampered, doctrine of this, but we know what they're not teaching us. They're not teaching us to rest on our Shabbat. No hijack is teaching us to rest on any day. They're just doing their own thing. <laughs> so rest is not hijack. Our Hebrew is not hijack. Hawa, the fifth and sixth letter of Hebrew, is not hijack. We know they're using it as Lord. But Lord is coming from Hawa, the primitive Hebrew root verb, H1961. Hawa. So we can see the babies in the bathwater. We can get the Mose, the Moshe. We don't got to throw out all the scriptures because we think we've been deceived. We can look at it with a dragonfly perspective, tune back in with wisdom, with that Ruach, and peel out everything pertaining and connecting to us keeping the code going directly to our source, to our creator, to our Hawa, being redeemed. Because after you sat solitary, many days without a king, you ain't talking Preston John, you ain't talking King David, you ain't talking Queen Sheba, Queen Khalifa, without any prince, no con, right? Without your sacrifice of, you know, sacrifices of, you know, whatever goodness, sacrifices of righteousness, sacrifices of, of sin offerings any of that stuff you know we, we, we don't we don't compute anymore right we, it's been many days this is prophecy that you don't compute with any of this no more but it's also prophecy that afterwards I said afterwards you Managi will return see the hijack ain't telling us that we're going to return they just trying to Say America's a militant pot. We should all just be Christians now and be a Christian country. Come on, man. They don't tell us that we're going to return, but you can't return without listening, without seeking, delighting in the creator. To do that means you're keeping the creator's code, law, statutes, covenant, commandment. Exodus 20, thou shalt not kill. 
No more smoking each other, right? Thou shalt not steal. No more jacking each other, God. No false witnessing on each other. If you don't know the story, shut your mouth about it. If you don't know the detail. And definitely don't make up no story just to bring your brother down. And definitely don't make up some story about somebody else being a false witness on you. Because now you being a false witness, claiming somebody's a false witness on you. Please don't make up. Please don't bring no covetous in your heart bone around your family. My naga. This is simple, elementary goodness. We're talking about returning to Hawaii's goodness. You must seek the creator first. This is our motto. This is our mojo. <laughs> this is our flow. This is our, our destiny. This is our prophecy. Don't let no one take your prophecy away because it don't pertain to them. Return it. It pertains to Israel. Hasharah. Return it. And when you seek the creator and his goodness, you seek Dawi. You don't seek David to get to the creator. You seek the creator to get to David. <laughs> you seek the creator and now you're on the press to flow. Now you're back in your noble, your royalty. Now we can talk about getting out of solitary and having a con, right? We can't talk con without seeking Hawa. Then we can talk con da we. It's not a it's it's not a confusing thing about no Yahawasha, Yah Yahusha, Yeshua. Hail to the no. It's very clear who the con is. When we return and seek the Creator, the Creator's commandments, the Creator's law, the Creator's code. When we keep the code, we know that David is our shepherd. Ezekiel 37, Ezekiel 34, Jeremiah 30 all say the same thing. Psalms 89 says the same thing. How can you deny all this David flow and then make some story up about a son of David? Why are you hijacking the David line and David title if Jesus is an immaculate conception? He ain't got no daddy. He can't be the son of David. He's an immaculate conception. Ain't he the son of God? No. The Christians say Jesus is God. Damn, don't you see that's blasphemy? Jesus is now God. If he's God, then he don't need to be a son of David. And if he's the son of God, he definitely don't need to be the son of David. So why is he called son of David if he's an immaculate conception? Make it make sense. They had to hijack the David line because David is God forever. Because when you seek the creator and David... You're con, then you come trembling. You're humble unto Hawaii. And now you got the goodness in the end of days, which is the beginning. This is why we seek Hawaii. This is why we are seeking Dawi. And this is why we are humble and trembling and keeping our code in these days, these last days, my nugget, which is the beginning, which is the first. Are you returning with a naga? This is just Hosea 3. Hosea is Joshua. Yeshua. Uh-oh. <laughs> we talking original. We talking the real Joshua. Joshua under Moshe, who Moses laid his hands on in Deuteronomy 34, passed his Ruach to Joshua. Now Joshua started parting the waters. <laughs> Joshua stopped the sun in his tracks. Joshua stopped the moon in his tracks to fight the war with the Amalekites. Joshua stopped the waterfalls from flowing. Let the, let the tribe cross on dry land. Joshua is a different type of magi. His magic is different than Jesus. Turning water to wine, walking on water. Joshua parted the waters, parted the Jordan. Just like Moshe. With the same Ruah. What's a bigger magi? What's a bigger magic? Turning water to wine, walking on water. Or literally parting the entire river <laughs> literally stopping the sun and it's making the sun stand still making the moon stand still what what magic is greater making the sun stand still or walking on water and remember david also walked on water <laughs> but we get that in uh benjamin of tadula and david put down his cloak and started walking on water and he disappeared <laughs> he did all kinds of cool things he turned invisible 
David got a lot of magic. Walking on water, that's lightweight for David. Stopping the, making the sun stand still, that's great, great magic. Making the moon stand still, great magic. <laughs> parting the parting the rivers, parting the seas completely so the tribe can cross on dry land, that's greater magic. Don't play with us about Joshua. We have a real Joshua, a real Yeshua, who's a real messenger, Hamashiach. But the king is David. Come. The point is, if they're not in your frequency, they can't affect you. They had to pull us to their frequency to even have any type of effect on us. And when we tune up out of it, then they lose their grip. They lose their control. And that's when they start adjusting their laws to martial laws. That's when they start getting more aggressive to keep a hold on you because they want to keep you in slavery, dumb, deaf, and blind. But we see clearly what a dragon flit on. No effect. No effect in the 512. No effect unless they tune you to their 440 hijack. Now they can affect you. Now they got a hold on you now. Look at this man. Okay. Okay. Hey, let's get some, let's get some more, man. It's getting too good. I implore all y'all to enjoy all these drops because this is crazy. This one here is crazy. It's a Joe Rogan flow talking about how Arizona is the center of the world. I never heard that. Let's go. This is in Arizona? Yeah, in Arizona. And this really rich guy, he's a uh, what is it? Uh, he's a wealthy guy. He's a wealthy guy. And he has a really rich wife. Wait, is this real? Well, yeah, we ran into. Can we make sure that this is real? We visited it. Oh, for tours of this place. Oh, we did a tour. It was we did a tour of fine. Why? Try to get us in the center of the pyramid, in the center of the thing, put our foot in the middle, save this thing and make a wish and then sign a contract. And I was like, and we were like, I'm not doing that. And she what? was like, well, it's the only part of the tour you have to do. And they go. To do the tour. And that's when we said, we don't want to do the tour anymore. We're going to leave. And she was pissed. And then they said, she goes, this right here is the center, center of, of the, the world. world. This is in Arizona? This yes. is in Arizona. And this really. If this is the center of the world, then you ain't on no damn ball. Where's the center of the ball? In the middle of the ball? <laughs> if Arizona is the center of the world, according to this Rothschild flow, you're not on no damn ball. I think somebody said it love to mellow the medicine. It makes the flat earth theory more plausible. How can you have a center of a ball? <laughs> but if you have a flat circle like a pizza, you could surely pick the center of that. Con Mello, Con Mount Graham houses in Arizona. Uh, it's one of our indigenous American teleporting sites. Okay, a Vatican named after Vatica, uh, Queen of the Underworld. Or we also have the Batu Khan, right? So this just shows you how there could be different interpretations. You know, she went from Vatican to Queen of the Underworld. <laughs> we go Vatican like Batu. Because the V's are B's, Batu, Batikan, Bat is house, Khan is is the Khan, right? So it's the house of the Khan or the priest, the priestly house. Originally, it was the house of the Khan, right? Then it became their Batu, like under a Genghis, Kublai Khan, and Batu Khan. You know what I mean? It became their flow, you know what I'm saying? And then maybe you can connect it with this other stuff. But there is a telescope called Lucifer. That's a, that's that's the drive, man. Love to Aqua Sharp, man. What it do, Aqua? That's where I'm at right now. I'm in Arizona. Well, then Aqua, you're in the center of the world. Really rich guy. He's a uh, what is it? What is a Rothschild. A Rothschild. He bought this town of Felicity and named it after his wife, Felicity. Wait, is this real? Who we yeah, we ran into. Can we make sure this is real? We visited. Okay. It. Go for tours of this place. Oh, we did a tour. It was, we did a tour of fighting. Why? We tried to get us in the center of the pyramid, in the center of the thing, put our foot in the middle, save this thing and make a wish and then sign a contract. And I was like, and we were like, I'm not doing that. And she was like, well, it's 
the only part of the tour you have to do. And they go do the tour. And that's when we said we don't want to do the tour anymore. We're going to leave. And she was pissed. And then they said, this right here is the center of the world. Arizona, Kalelu. So all this Kalelu's flow is connected directly with Arizona. And maybe it's starting to make sense. Speaking of flat drop one, check this out, man. This is some science drop, some tech. Drop. We have quantum locking. The, the spoken actor is locked in space. And it stays wherever I put it. You see, this is quantum trapping. That's amazing. As, as long as it's So the cold, super it's superconducting. It's frozen with liquid nitrogen. Upside down. Right. And it stays locked. So it's actually floating above the surface. Yeah, it's not floating. It's locked above the surface. So it could you could tilt it at an angle and it would yeah, still fly around. Yeah, like this, and it will just go around like this. Because it go and put it at different height, and then like this. Is this how the sun and the moon work on a flat plane, my nigga? Are they in quantum locking? And is this how you trap in quantum? <laughs> I love the physics dot stuff on IG. I told y'all, man. Just a little flat drop. Just a little flat drop. Ah, uh, man. One more. Let's get this one, man. Let's get this one. The term psychological warfare. Like in 1984, Yuri Besmanov, a KGB defector, sat down in an interview and dropped this nugget. Check this out. Ideological subversion is, is the slow process of psychological warfare to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interest of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. It's a great brainwashing process, of the first one being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation, mm. ideology. Mm. is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students. Mm. The demoralization process in the United States is basically completed already. Most of it is done by Americans to Americans, mm. thanks to lack of moral standards. Exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who is demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. Even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, <laughs> with pictures, he will refuse to believe it. Wow. I want to know. You can give him all the drop, all the information. And because they, and you can't even be mad at the fam like they're, they're in, we're all still breaking out the spell. Some are going to break out faster than others. Some are going to be in some quantum lock. <laughs> They're going to be locked into some hijack ideologies. It, it said, what, three generations? Think about your grandma, right? Think about your parents, your grandma, and they great-grandma. Ain't that the time when they really started hitting them with heavy ideologies, missionaries? Christianity, all this stuff, right? Out of Africa's three generations, and now it's a fact. He said, they've changed your perception of reality. In other words, you're not in reality. You're not black. You're not African American. You're, not, you're none of this. You are the Swan Knights. You are the Babar, my Naga. You are the Nagas of Kalelu's promised land, India, Superior. Columbus wasn't lost when he found. India, he was searching for the Khan of India Superior on the British map. What that say? Press the child. One more time. I don't know, I don't know what, what you guys think about this. Drop your comment down, down below. You've, You've probably heard the term psychological warfare. But in 1984, Yuri Besmanov, a KGB defector, sat down in an interview and dropped this nugget. Check this out. Ideological subversion is, is the slow process of psychological warfare to change the perception of reality of every American, to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions. Right. Look at all these conclusions, now, because, you know, our people, look at all these, it's, it's not even sensible. So when you come at them with common sense to break down their non-sensible situations, then they go into a cognitive dissonance, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're stuck really in the matrix, man. In the interest of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. It's a great brainwashing process. Of the first one being demoralization. Mm -hmm. It takes from 15 to 20 years. Come on. They have it planned out, mapped out. They got it timed out. 
It's going to take about 20 years to demoralize these Nagas. How did they demoralize it? Just open it. Just even the hijack history book would teach you a little bit about how they demoralize us with the slave narrative, right? Let's go. Yes, to demoralize the nation. Ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of Christianity. Soft heads. Why? Because you don't have no more. Our children and our children's children that aren't raised with us will have soft heads if they're not raised with us. They might still be able to pick their way through like we did eventually, but their heads will be soft because they don't have no armor. You take their dragon away, they, they close their eyes, they can't see clearly. A dragon without its scales is soft. <laughs> you ain't got your scales, man. You ain't got your armor. Oh, at least three generations of American students. The three generations, and now it's a fact. The demoralization process in the United States is basically completed already. Most of it... I mean, is he lying? Is done by Americans to Americans. Hijacks to indigenous Americans. Thanks to lack of moral standards. Exposure to true information does not matter anymore. Mm. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information. I'm not saying it. When we drop this drop by Kalelu's, 97% of folks, most likely, I know, I believe more of us is popping off, but they're not going to be able to access this, assess this. They're not going to be able to, you know, function with this flow. You know what I'm saying? They're going to hear it. It's going to be interesting. And they off to whatever distraction is happening in social media, man. They're going to keep scrolling, right? The facts tell nothing to him. Even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, he will refuse to believe it. I want to know what you guys think about that. <laughs> Bang. All right. All right. Um, it's a couple that I tried to share that they wouldn't even let me share. So I promised myself I'm going to pull them up as well so we can start talking Barbara Reef. Uh, look at this other great uh, researcher, man. Really dig on these drops. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Hey, that's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I want. Boo, 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 boo. Come, come. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is it. This is it. <laughs> Love to the con, uh, Astro 5D, man. Some good water to swim in, con. Some good water to swim in. Let's see what this one is right here. Our government gaslights us. Bruh, I feel like we are in a mentally abusive, narcissistic relationship with our government. Astronomers only just noticed that a fake moon has been following the Earth since 100 BC. Just noticed since 100 BC? And supposedly NASA is sending telescopes up there all the time, make it make sense, my brain's boiling. So, when y'all took Warner Von Braun during Project Paperclip, and he was at the head of NASA, and on his tombstone, he put Psalms 19.1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Bang. Y'all didn't believe it then? Y'all didn't think to check then? This photo's not suspicious to you? Okay, so in 2011, y'all said Earth has two moons right now, theorists say. And then in 2014, Y'all question it again, does the Earth have a second moon? And then in 2021, y'all said Earth has a second moon for another 300 years. So in 2021, y'all was very specific. Even though us quote unquote conspiracy theorists was telling y'all that we were seeing this stagnant moon in the sky throughout the day and it has not been here in our lifetime. Y'all didn't think to check then with this transparent moon in the sky that you can see stars through. And y'all don't find that suspicious. So we're supposed to have this moon circling the Earth and then us rotating around the sun. 
So we we supposed to have that mode and supposed to have that action going on up there. And y'all didn't notice that we had this stagnant moon in the sky this entire time. Now you see another reason why they went to shut down TikTok. The matrix is crumbling. And it's not crumbling due to them controlling it. It's crumbling due to the um, collective awakening. You see, when a narcissist feels like they're going to lose you, they try to control the narrative, a.k.a. controlling you. So, in Moonfall, y'all told us that the moon was artificial intelligence. In the Truman Show, y'all had the moon as this station where y'all can spy on the citizens below. Y'all drop the articles, it's like y'all don't know what's going on, but with the films, y'all, y'all gaslighting us. Y'all don't think we know, but we know. The big political and economic question of the 21st century will be what do we need humans for? Or at least, what do we need so many humans for? Do you have an answer in the book? Um, at present, the best guess we have is uh, keep them happy with drugs and computer games. But this doesn't sound like a very appealing future. What you want? <laughs> Five D mystery school. How y'all really? I need to get a piece of that back for a stack. Fall back, get your popcorn. We're gonna go from that to some great drop by unanswered universe. And then we going in ball, man. Uh, the best is yet to come. If you made it this far, man, I could just throw some dragons over there, man. I, just give me some dragon emojis, man. You know, just let me know you still surfing the wave past the halfway point <laughs> ready for a beautiful nadia komenichi perfect 10 uh perfect nine dismount man <laughs> let's go our government gaslights us bruh i feel like we are in a mentally abusive narcissistic relationship with our government Astronomers only just noticed that a fake moon has been following the Earth since 100 BC. Just noticed since 100 BC? And supposedly NASA is sending telescopes up there all the time, make it make sense. My brain's boiling. So, when y'all took Warner Von Braun during Project Paperclip, and he was in the head of NASA, and on his tombstone, he put Psalms 19, 1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Y'all didn't believe it then? Y'all didn't think to check then? This photo is not suspicious to you? Okay, so in 2011, y'all said Earth has two moons right now, theorists say. And then in 2014, Y'all question it again, does the Earth have a second moon? And then in 2021, y'all said Earth has a second moon for another 300 years. So in 2021, y'all was very specific. Even though us quote unquote conspiracy theorists was telling y'all that we were seeing this stagnant moon in the sky throughout the day and it has not been here in our lifetime. Y'all didn't think to check then with this transparent moon in the sky that you can see stars through. And y'all don't find that suspicious. So we're supposed to have this moon circling the Earth and then us rotating around the sun. So we we supposed to have that moon and supposed to have that action going on up there. And y'all didn't notice that we had this stagnant moon in the sky this entire time. Now you see another reason why they went to shut down TikTok. The matrix is crumbling and it's not crumbling due to them controlling it it's crumbling due to the um collective awakening you see when a narcissist feels like they're going to lose you they try to control the narrative aka controlling you so in moonfall y'all told us that the moon was artificial intelligence in the truman show y'all had the moon as this station where y'all can spy on the citizens below Y'all drop the articles, it's like y'all don't know what's going on, but with the films, y'all, y'all gaslighting us. Y'all don't think we know, but we know. The big political and economic question of the 21st century will be what do we need humans for? Or at least, what do we need so many humans for? Do you have an answer in the book? 
Um, at present, the best guess we have is uh, keep them happy with drugs and computer games. But this doesn't sound like a very appealing future. What you are? <laughs> what you are, boss? Hey, let's get one more before we, you know, just enjoy this, uh, you know? Hey, <laughs> like I said, I ain't been so excited. Hey, look, we're going to, you know, go right into Preston 124, man. We got so much more to talk about the Kingdom of Georgia. Um, I would love to get into the Aleppo Codex, man, as well for the dismount. As well, so we got some more links to pull up. Uh, Lost tries and promised land. We still got to talk some China flow out the OISB. Let's go, let's go. Uh, love to again, uh, Astro 5D. And let's see this last one here Unexplained Universe. <laughs> Take the wheel. They wouldn't let me share this joint, man. Check it out. I wonder why. I wanted to see what would happen if I sent my pet lizard DNA to 23 me. And so with the help of my wife, we extracted enough saliva to send off in the mail. We were so excited to see the results. After about three months, we were shocked. My lizard was 51% Ashkenazi Jewish. He was also 48% West Asian. This was really interesting. They also gave us a little bit of his background and his history, what he liked to eat, etc. Let us know which animal DNA we should send in next. Wow. I wanted to see what would happen if I sent my pet lizard DNA to 23 and me. Wow. And so with the help of my wife, we extracted enough saliva to send off in the mail. We were so excited to see the results. After about three months, we were shocked. My lizard was 51% Ashkenazi Jewish. He was also 48% West Asian. Now, you can interpret this a couple of ways. Might not. One, on the surface, obviously, these DNA tests are complete malarkey, right? Uh, you could send a saliva of a dog, and what you're going to come up with, you know, uh, Sub Saharan African, <laughs> yada, yada. But this lizard flow. Another way, that's a pretty big hit on the Ashkenazis, right? And, of course, we've done talked about the Nazi flow a lot, the Nazis. The Nazis have a lot to do with the Ashkenazi, right? You know, Germans and Italy and you know, all that flow, right? The Nazis versus Ashkenazis. Seems like a family affair going on. And this lizard flow could also be a family affair. This could also be letting us know, and the reason why they didn't let me share this on IG is that this uh, lizard DNA <clears throat> is, is hit, might be hitting their uh, gene pool. You know what I'm saying? This might be like a reverse engineering <laughs> of figuring out which animals some of these people have been spliced and diced with. But I'm going to let Natural By Law uh, take the wheel from here. Because <laughs> he got the drop already. Go dig on natural by law and his DNA flow, splicing and dicing flow, lizard flow. Uh, is this a hard hit on what's really popping off with, you know, when they bring up reptilian flow, right? We talk dragon, but reptilian means lizard, snake, all this other stuff, right? So <laughs> is this a hard hit? With this lizard DNA. All right, all right. That's, that's all I'm going <laughs> to drop for now. Love to unanswer universe, man. And hey, out to all the cons, man, that. What stopped me know, from going to jail was food. my OG. So, like, oh, man, Daniel shout out, shout out to Man Hoffa, man, doing his thizzle, man. Dang Dash, man. Always inspiring. Inspiring a nugget. And keep uh, inspiring us, man. Keep dropping your drop. And we'll keep sharing your drop right here on IG as well as. The tube, man. We on the tube now. We on the tube. So let's get back in here. Uh, I'm pulling this right out the drop library. Ahab again to the Octemi. This Tarazanta link. We got it up already. Right here for you, man. Let's get into it.
Yeah, there we go. A hop dialogue popping off, man. For real, for real. Y'all go click the link, get the drop, man. Dialogue popping off, man. Clearly, he is a wave surfer. <laughs> Anytime you see ancient Hebrews, uh, Azareth, Kalelus, Mormons, more, more, you know, you, you know, you dig it on a very specific uh, investigation, man. So, not too many lagers uh, have really picked up the Kalelus flow and connected with the Mormon. The Mormon, we got to get this drive. Let's get it. Who was pressed the chair? The legend of the ten lost tribes of Israel has been a mysterious one. Multiple Bible scholars have debated and identified many modern races as being the northern kingdom of Israel. Among these, the most popular are the Aborigines of the Western Hemisphere or the earlier civilizations of Europe. All groups base their conclusions on prophecy and speculative geographical indicators of arsenal. An examination of the tribe's migrational patterns according to the writings of Esdras supports only land immigration westwards as a surprise to most. The scripture reads, those are the 10 tribes which were carried away prisoner out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king, whom Salmanasser, the king of Assyria, led away captive. And he carried them over the waters. And so came they into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where mankind never dwelt, that they might keep their statues, which they never kept in their own land. And they enter into the Euphrates by the narrow places of the river. For the Most High then shewed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. For through that country, there was a great way to go namely of a year and a half and the same region is called Arsara then dwell they there until the latter time and now when they shall begin to come second Esdras chapter 13 verses 40 through 46 Now, before we continue, I would like to highlight a few basic points about this journey. One, they were going to a new region where civilization had not arisen before. Two, the country did not have established kingdoms or civilizations in it. Three, they would be free to hold true to their culture and under no compulsion to worship other gods. Four, they had to cross the Euphrates at the narrow part to get there. Come on. The Israelites had lived in several places already at this time. Also keep in mind that according to the narrative, wherever they lived, the Gentiles had been problematic for their faith. So they decided to go somewhere else. Based on this information, we can rule out places such as Egypt, Mesopotamia, Lebanon and Palestine. It also most likely rules out Turkey and Greece, being that they had extensive trade and communication since the days of King David and Solomon. They had to either go eastwards beyond Persia or westward beyond Egypt. Another thing to address lies within the scripture itself. The part in question reads, and they enter into the Euphrates by the narrow places of the river. For the Most High then shewed signs for them, and held still the flood till they were passed over. At first sight, one is tempted to think that God showed them a sign by holding back the Euphrates itself 
for the people to cross. But after further examination of this, it is apparent that the people had been crossing the Euphrates before without needing a miracle. If God were going to place a miracle at the Euphrates, he wouldn't have bothered to take them to the narrow passages to cross. The story in Ezra say that they crossed and the Most High then shows a sign. This is very reminiscent of the exodus from Egypt. The cloud and the pillar of fire did not appear to the Hebrews until they stepped out of Egypt. From there, they were led through the wilderness to the Red Sea where God parted the waters. Here in circa 722 BC, it could be understood that God waited for the tribes to step over the Euphrates in faith. Then he was able to lead them. It could also be understood that the flood that was held back is referring to the annual flooding of the Tigris and Euphrates River. Every year, floods peak in April and May, and spring snow melts and flows out of modern-day Iran. Yeah, we know we got the Euphrates right here in America. There's a lot of recon. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's all happening right here. Let's get it. One more quick point to make. Every continent on the planet has some inhabitants at the very least. This includes North and South America, contrary to popular belief. The expression, where no mankind dwelt, simply means that there was no established societies or culture there. We can gather this by knowing that they, the Israelites, were already a nomadic priestly class of people with no real home base according to the narrative of the And mankind is not us, right? We're not kind of man, right? We are, we are, you know, real creations, you know what I'm saying? Mankind dwelling, going to a place where no mankind is dwelling. Well, now you're going to a hijack free place, not a place where no one is, but no kind of man. <laughs> no synthetics. Let's get it. So a look at the established cultures in the region might give an indication of where this land actually is. So let's build a quick timeline. About 1000 BC, we see several kingdoms fighting for supremacy in this region. To the east of Assyria are the Medes, Persians, Parthians, Aryans spreading in India, and the emerging Chinese and Korean tribes. Northwards are the Fergians. To the west is Arabia or Havila, with its nomadic tribes, as well as the declining Egyptian kingdom, which is the only established civilization in the realm we refer to as Africa. There were no known kingdoms west of Egypt at this time. Around 700 BC, soon after the Hebrew tribes migrated out of Assyria, the dominions of the territories begin to change. We see the rise of the Persian Empire, which now covers most of the Middle East. India with its city-states is east of this empire, and beyond the mountains are the Chinese. To the north are the Greeks, which are now the major force in Europe, but very specifically in the Aegean Sea area. To the west, Africa and Arabia are still predominantly made up of scattered nomadic tribes and hunters. With that, I propose the people who are referred to as the Qumri by the Assyrians and Greeks are the ancestors of the Celtic races, which are the lost tribes who settled in Northwest Europe and the region of Armorca. These tribes are also identified in historical records as Teutonic races, the Sake or the Scythians, the Anglo-Saxons or the angelic sons of Isaac, the Gauls, the original English, and the Tuatha de Danan. From there, smaller remnants of these groups migrated further west into the Americas and established societies there among the indigenous groups that were already there that are not mentioned in the Bible. So let's look at what archeological and primary evidence substantiates this. The Assyrian cuneiform tablets translated by Professor Leroy Waterman at the University of Michigan 
reveals that the Israelites, originally known to the Assyrians as Qumri, were placed in captivity near the river Habor and in river Gozan near the Medes in northern Iran. Some of the different appellations of the word Qumri is Simri, Gomri, Omri, and Amiri. Remember that one for later. During this captivity, the Israelites were renamed Gamira and Semirians. That was the way the Assyrians pronounced Kimbri. Although they occupied the land of the Medes, they were distinctly a different people. The Black Stone, known as the Black Obelisk, depicts Shalmaneser's victory over several kingdoms. The stone was found by Austin Layard and is stored at the British Museum. In the second row from the top is a carving of Jehu bowing down to the ground, while his servant presents him gifts. On the obelisk, Jehu is called the Bit of Omri, meaning House of Omri. It would make sense that the Assyrians in this period used the phrase House of Omri to refer to the northern kingdom of Israel. Jehu was the son of Omri, an Israelite king. Also, according to Britannica, the oldest archaeological evidence of the Celts comes from Halsa in Austria near Salzburg. Excavated graves of chieftains date back to 700 BC, which aligns with the assumed timeline of this migration. Another point to add when dealing with records is renowned historian Flavius Josephus. Mm -hmm. He states that the entire body of the people of Israel remain in that country, wherefore there are two tribes in Asia and Europe subject to the Romans, while ten tribes are beyond the Euphrates till now and are in a midst multitude. This provides insight to the general political landscape of these tribes in their respective regions. This is even more interesting because that the Israelites would have returned to the Promised Land at this point, and he died in circle 100 AD. This would mean that a general knowledge of the location and political climate of the lost tribes was known to them at this time. The writings of Josephus so happen to correlate with the 29th chapter of Acts, also known as the Sonini Manuscript. In fairness to intellectual honesty, no trace of the original Greek manuscript has been found today, and for this reason the document is considered by most scholars as a fake. However, according to the history we do have, we know that the document was purchased with the selling of Sir John Newport's library in Ireland. The book itself was a document presented to Sonini from the Sultan Abdul Ahmed of Turkey, from the archives of Constantinople. According to historical sources, the document appeared at a time when supposedly a new understanding was rising, that the Britons were a part of the lost tribes of Israel. Few have considered that if a Frenchman had been handed the original, he would most certainly hand it over to his Pope father or the Catholic authority for verification. The original would never be heard of again if glorified holy links to Britain. This actually poses an interesting question based on the collection of facts that attest to these Celtic races having links to these lost tribes. Should we look at the removed chapter as being eradicated from all copies of the Acts of the Apostles, specifically to nullify any notion of the British and their claim to testing primacy over Rome? Acts chapter 29 verses 3 through 7. And the Lord commanded the gospel to be preached far hence to the Gentiles and to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And no man hindered Paul, for he testified boldly of Jesus before the tribunes and among the people. And he took with him certain of the brethren, which abode with him at Rome. And they took shipping at Ostium, and having the winds fair, were brought safely into a haven of Spain. And much people were gathered together from the towns and villages and the hill country, for they had heard of the conversion of the apostles and the many miracles which he had wrought. And Paul preached mightily in Spain, and great multitudes believed and were converted, for they perceived he was an apostle sent from God. And they departed out of Spain, 
and Paul and his company finding a ship in Armorica mm. sailed unto Britain. It would be reasonable to conclude that during this time, Paul visited Andalusia, also known as Spain, as he had planned this already according to Romans chapter 15 verses 28, and he preached to the lost sheep who are scripturally implied to be the northern king. I know we in the hijack, I know they're in the New Testament and all that, but this baby's in the bathwater, you know what I'm saying, and they're using certain foundational parts and pieces same thing as JC talking about Johnny the Baptist, connecting that with Prester John, who was, you know, dipping us, dipping his people in the fountain of youth. Now they call it baptism. <laughs> fountain of youth was turning you back to the age of 32. Right. Living waters. But they translate that and transcribe that to Christianity, to baptism. We're just talking the waters, fountain of youth. Johnny the Baptist, Prester John with the fountain of youth. So they take a lot of our foundational pieces and duplicate them and make a new testament that has enough of our magi flow to attract us. So them talking about Paul in Spain and all this, you know, we can kind of uh, reverse engineer <laughs> like I think this uh, con is doing right here and just seeing how this story is being told over there and how this links up with some historical you know, connections. Let's get it. Doing a great job. Go. The kingdom of Israel. So, really quick, let's recap. According to the writings of Estrus, the northern kingdom of Israel collectively decided to migrate into the area outside of the jurisdiction of the Assyrian. Most archaeological and primary sources point to this collection of people migrating west into the northwestern regions of Europe and the Iberian Peninsula, adopting different names along the way. St. Paul, Flavius Josephus, and Sonini all confirm. And right quick, here's my thing. Here's my thing. All right, so we see our maps, we see their hijack maps. And all of the bros doing a great job connecting this and that. We also have sort of an open interpretation, open investigation of this being that, that they literally duplicated our stuff on their maps over there, right? They got Asia Minor here, which means what? That there's an Asia Major. Why not? Why not? Asia Major is what they're calling North America and Americas and all that. Iberia is Eber. Eber is the same as the Kiber. The KH or just the H. They put the C's or the K's in front to throw us off the trick because we, we just got Caveria, the same thing. The Iberia is the Iberia, is the Caveria that we're seeing on the maps of America. So imagine all this happening in Asia Major. Imagine, just imagine this story taking place in America, <laughs> in India Superior. Confirm this as well. These facts plus more would result in a conclusion that the region referred to as Arsuit in the scripture is referring to a region in Europe in which the Hebrews passed through in order to reach their destination. The term Arsuit is a perversion of the term Aramak, as clearly shown in biblical translations, which comes oh, from in the Ararat. It's like Mount Ararat, and we just got the whole North Carolina flood. <laughs> Ain't there a Mount Ararat, North Carolina, man? Then we get that, go get the drop. Hey, we're going to connect some Albany drops, some Gwinnett, Gwinnett drop. All these are your royal spots, royal titles, royal places, and it's all happening here in Monaghan. So even in their new testiness, they seem to be using some of the same foundational pieces highlight America from the Babylonian Aratu which is a region of Armenia the Hebrews traveled through Arsu not to it now if we were to assume that this is all factual how would we then explain the presence of the Hebrews already in America pre-Columbus we just did for those who aren't aware, there is plenty of evidence to support the idea that the Hebrews were already in the Americas before the arrival of any colonial power. 
from the Bat Creek Stone mm. to the Los Lunas Decalogue mm. to the Judaic symbols found at Uxmal mm. to the similarities of certain words in the Uto Nawalt dialect to Aramaic and Hebrew. Mm. There go. Philology. There is clearly a connection in the Americas to the Hebrews. I propose this ethnogenesis happened somewhere around 100 BC. In the 1920s, archaeologists in Tucson, Arizona found objects and writings in Latin, Greek, and Hebrew. Oh yeah, we surfing the wave now, right? <laughs> Summer wave surfers. No, we already home. All right, and this is what they're coming out with, man. Even in the New York Times, they were talking about these relics that they're digging up in Arizona, stirring the scientists, purport to chronicle the arrival of the Roman Jews or Remani. Hebrew word of the day. That's why we took the time and continue to, you know, go over these basics, man. That's not so basic, but they're basic. The Rimon is the pomegranate. The Jews is the Hebrews. The pomegranate is the promised land. Kalelus. These artifacts got Hebrew on them. They got Latin, uh, Latin inscriptions. They got all these different languages that the Khans were speaking, many languages, translating or putting their inscriptions, putting their uh, messages, you know, in many languages and you know just dig this stuff up relics dug up in arizona and then we just got that arizona's the center of the world now this don't mean that the naval cusco peru being the naval can't be the naval but the naval don't always have to be the center you know what i'm saying and the naval could be connected with this arizona flow right cusco peru could be connected with the vortex in arizona and Antarctica. Let's go. With both Catholic and Jewish ritual objects and symbols. Hebrew. Cyclone Kobe describes this discovery in his book, Kalelus, a Roman Jewish colony in America Kalelu. from the time of Charlemagne through Alfred the Great. In this area specifically, and other areas in the Americas, are found mixtures of Jewish, Nordic, Christian, Hindu, and Kabbalistic objects and symbols. The records of Kalelu speak of a Theodorus, a man who led a group of people to the land of Kalelus in 775 AD. Theodorus in reality is the king of Septimania, a Roman Jewish state in southern France, also known as Gaul or Armorica. He is the son of the first Israelite king of Septimania, also called Theodoric. Theodoric, Theory, or Amiri. <laughs> and it's cool because he's getting the drop that we just got out of Forbidden Histories of America. All right, so I'm glad we got all this sourced out because if we just got this for the first time, we'd be like, what's going on? But we we got the books in the drive library. You can go get all this stuff in the drive library. Cool. Um, he just said America, you know, back to that um, uh, New Testament connection with the land over there. But Daniel Lowe clearly says land of America. So he's already skipping over what they're saying, you know, connected with lands and Gauls over there. It's all happening right here. This is the forbidden history of America we're hearing about. Let's go. Similar to the appellation of Simri that we referred to earlier, right? Uh, Theodorus is also known as Theodore. King of Saxony and his Namus, Duke of Bavaria. Okay. He and his brother were great warriors during the time of Charlemagne. Okay. Professor Arthur Zuckerman, in his book, A Jewish Princedom in Feudal France, confuses him with his father, who bears the same Frankish name of Theodoric and Emiri. Makir. On the death of his father, Makir Theodoric, in about 765 AD, Nehemiah Theodoric becomes the Western Exilarch and leader of all Jews of the revived Western Roman Empire of Charlemagne. In 775 AD, 
Theodoric reconquered the American Empire Kalelus from the indigenous people, which was at the time ruled by Sylvanus Tol Texas. Or right, that's why we gotta always have our clarity going. So it's not that Theodoric conquered it from the indigenous people. That makes it like he's against the indigenous people. <laughs> Nah, this is a family Hebrew war. They were Hebrews. They were Hebrews. They were Caesar David. They were Caesar David. This is a fight for the promised land when the kingdom is being divided after the days of Solomon. As Solomon the builder is now being ran up on and his people are, you know, fighting for this promised land. And even those that were captured were still protected by the royal families in Europe and throughout Asia Minor and Asia Major. So this wasn't just... Uh, Theodoric against the indigenous people, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? These people reconquered something that's already connected with their family. We're talking about the promised land here. Let's go. Let's go. Were nicknamed by them Solomon the Builder. It's dope. Kaleus was founded in the first century BC by the Babylonian exilarch known as Sylvanus Ogon or Sylvanus Bravo, the ruler of Sumer, which is Somerset in Britain, a soldier and ancestor of the Swan Knights. After the defeat of Sylvanus Tol Texas, the members of the royal family were sent back to Europe, where they were under the protection of Nehemiah Theodorus and his family. The legends of Dune and Ogier are based on the activities of this family. The legends of Ogier the Dane, son of Godfred, and Dune the Menace actually refer to the Tuat de Dana, Mananan, or the god of the sea, which could be made synonymous with Maine and America. The Irish legend of Regamon also alludes to this family. Ogre, Olmec. This could also explain the origins of the understanding of the Mormon Church. Okay. Keep in mind that Joseph Smith was an old Freemason and possibly a commercial Jew based on his surname. And we got the new series coming out, Mormons Digging Deeper. I've been talking about it, and this is going to link to this flow. We're going to get back on the Tarzanta map when we talk Moroni, because he's going to bring up Moroni, right? The title of uh, the bros video is Tarzanta, ancient Hebrews, all right? America, Kalelu. So we got a wave surfer here, man. He's talking Tarzanta and Kalelu. You already know, right? So I'm glad we got, you know, all this already, you know what I'm saying? Somewhere that we can go back to because he's reading it, but you want to know where he's reading it from. You want to know where he's getting it from, right? We, we, you want to know that we in the Forbidden Histories of America reading exactly what the bro is kicking right here. Swan boats, swan nights. This Israel flow is all happening, right? The Toltec flow is all happening. Tarzanta. Tarzanta who? Tarzanta. Tarzanta. Wow. Right? We've been talking Tarzanta. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Let's get it again. Let's pull up Tarzanta and we're going to keep going. Hope you're surfing away with me. I'm surfing away with you. We got a little mo for the dismount. Let's go. Might as well get the rest. Tarzanta. Wow. Love to say cool. Yeah. See, this is Antarctica. You see how it's curving up? You see, it's definitely something that is surrounding the middle earth but there's more land that's already mapped out tarzanta means holy land and then when we talk saints or santa or santa barbara which we're going to talk with a dismount santa barbara barbary barbar swan swan knights okay saint barbara swan knights holy let's go man <laughs> i mean Let's go. I can't make this up. We got Moronia. He's going to talk Moroni. What is Moronia? Moron, right? Mormon, Moron, Moron. All oh, this is that Mormon flow. Pia Moronia. Look at all this Moronia flow. Alpera Moronia. And you got another Moronia down here. So all this Moronia. Right, and then you got the Amazon flow right over here, Amazonia. And this is Antarctica, boss, with no cap on its chest bone, no ice cap, right? 
gateways of water going right through it to the other lands beyond the pole. But pay attention to all this moron, moronia, because these are actual people, my nine. Okay? Just listen up real close to the bro. And you got the receipts, you got the tars off the map. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's talking Tarzanta, hey man. And you can't bring up Tarzanta without bringing up the Tarzanta map. So they see you talking Antarctica with no ice on its cap or <laughs> no cap on its chest. But <laughs> let's go. Her name being connected to crypto Jews, meaning that he was accustomed to seeing things in signs and codes. The Mormons claim that the prophet Mormon lived during the fourth century. But history and science allude to him living closer to the ninth. During the lifetime of Charlemagne, Morvan or Mormon had been a faithful vassal to the Frankish Empire despite a Breton revolt in 811. With Morvan having been declared the king of Breton shortly after Charlemagne's death, mm. the integrity of the Frankish Empire was threatened because of the other regional vassals' threat to go their own way. King Louis the Pious of the Frankish Empire sends Abbot Witcher to negotiate with Mormon, which fails. Louis assembles an army in the spring of 818 at Vannes within the Breton March, which at this point is controlled by the Franks. With Lambert of Nantes in support, he launches a series of attacks against various Breton forces, and after Mormon is killed in battle, resistance collapses. The story somewhat parallels the story of the Prophet Mormon. Mm. The Prophet Mormon was a man who lived in ancient America. This is He was chosen by Yahusha HaMashiach, Hi, or Jesus Christ, Hi, to preserve and protect the sacred records, as well as add his own history and experiences to them. The records which he wrote and preserved would later become the Book of Mormon. Members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints recognized and acknowledged the Book of Mormon as a scripture, a holy writing that's similar to the Holy Bible. Aside from being a prophet and historian, Mormon was a leader who commanded many military troops in his native army. Mormon was born, raised, and was a part of the Nephite civilization a race of God-fearing people who once inhabited ancient America according to the narrative of the story. Hmm. At the age of 10, Mormon was approached by an ancient record keeper named Amoron, which sounds very similar to Amorim, which was a class of rabbinical scholars that maintained the original understanding of the Torah and Tanakh in the 3rd and 4th centuries. Amaron was ordered by God to take care and cautiously keep a series of valuable historical records which were written on thin. Ain't Moses's pop's name Amra? And they're talking about their version of the story. How this Amaron went to this 10 year old child and now he became this prophet. But ain't the prophet Moshe, ain't his dad also Amra? And ain't he one of the four sinless men <laughs> yeah, i mean i'm just uh, i told you man mormons digging deeper coming in hot but i'm ron similar to ron bomb who's the father of moses mamanides now you got to put the two moseses in the timeline put it back together i'm ron reminds me of the killy flow dang flow right killy You know, just go to Wikipedia, look Killian, and you're going to see that's also Daniel, who's the second son of David, king of Israel. No play play, right? Now, skipping here, it says, though being the second son, Killian was not a contender for the throne of Israel. Remember, Daniel was, you know, captured uh, by uh, what King uh, Nebuchadnezzar, one of them, right? And of the Babylonian takeover flow, right? He helped him see the visions and helped him interpret, and he became raised to a high position, same as Joseph, yada, yada, right? So, <laughs> Kilia was, uh, he says, even after his death, even after the death of the firstborn, Amnon, 
the third born Absalom and fourth born Madonijah, he may have died before his father. Later rabbinic traditions name him as one of four ancient Israelites who died without sin. That means they kept the code. They were code keepers through and through. The other being Benjamin, right? Tribe of Benjamin. Jesse, who's the father of King David. So when we talk David, he comes from a sinless man. Now you switch the S and the E up, and you got Jesus. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh, Bob. We're talking about sinless, right? Jesse and Amram. Amram, right? Father of Aaron, Moses, and Miriam. Okay, Amram, father of Moses, sounds a lot like that, uh, how they say it here. Let's back it up a little bit. One who was approached by an ancient record keeper named Amram. <laughs> Come on, I can't make this up, boss. Amram, sounds a lot like Amram. And now you got this prophet popping off, right? Let's go which sounds very similar to Amori, which was a class of rabbinical scholars Amora. that maintained the original understanding of the Torah and Tanakh in the third and fourth centuries. Amaron was ordered by God to take care and cautiously keep a series of valuable historical records, which were written on thin gold plates. The importance of these records is huge considering that it contains hundreds of years of history and has survived the test of time as it has been transferred from one generation to the next. Amaron hid the records and buried them in a hill. Amaron told Mormon that when he reaches the age of 24, he would then find all the records that he had hidden. At 16, he was chosen as commander of the Nephite armies. Though he's considered a great military leader, his forces were not strong enough to fight and defend. The battle left thousands of people dead. Mormon was also wounded, which forced him to hide and bury many of the sacred records. He gave some of the on-hand records to his son, Moroni, and instructed him to write about the final history of their people. As a good son, Moroni gave his contribution to the record and followed his father's order of burying the computer. All right, he just said Moroni. He's talking Moroni. Tarzan to who? Tarzan to what? <laughs> Managa. Tara Zanta. Wow. He talking Maroni. We're talking Maroni, but we're talking Antarctica. Magical gateways. The land beyond the poles. Mormon. His son is Maroni. Moroni is the son of the prophet Mormon, <laughs> son of Amra, and <laughs> let's go. I can't make this up. Here records, records again. again. Now, interestingly enough, there is an obvious connection to Armorica in Brittany, an antiquity dating back to ironically the fourth century, the same time period in which the Mormon church places Mormon, the prophet, in history. Nevertheless, this is important because of the similarities in the names that were chosen to reflect this story. For an example, the prophet Mormon, Moor, passes his records on to his son, Moroni, Moor, Mar. This is very similar to the name of the tribe of Armorican Romano Britons known as Maureen. This also adds a level of interest. Does this kind of remind you of the Mar, like the Maranon as well? Let's go. As knowing the people we modernly refer to as Vikings descend from this group of people. The Vikings on record technically have one of the oldest established territories, Lonzo Meadows in Newfoundland in the Americas dating back to 1000 AD. 
artifacts such as the Kensington Stone, a large slab of gray wax stone covered in Nordic runes found in Minnesota, or the Burrow Cave artifacts in Illinois, would suggest that these Vikings, Armoricans, Sumerians, or Hebrews established themselves amongst the northeastern American seaboard and possibly further. Also keep in mind that Joseph Smith was Keep in mind that the Vikings is the Roman numeral six. The VI is the Roman numeral six. Six kings, Hyksos. Let's go. Instructed to receive these alleged gold plates in upstate New York. So there could possibly be a connection there as well. Anyway, so, anyway, so what do we know about the Munich language? language? Well, according, according to the text, text, we really can't say that we know anything, anything but we're going to show you a few things. You know, Stecken has three separate sets of data from the Near East, from Near Eastern languages, about 400 matches with Egyptian. That's a very, that's a, a goodly amount. About 700 matches with Hebrew Aramaic. And it's, it's kind of like a Hebrew-Aramaic mix. In fact, it might even be more heavily Aramaic and less Hebrew. And they have the, those two bodies of data have the same sound correspondences uh, with each other. So that, that Semitic, Aramaic, Hebrew has the same sound correspondence as the Egyptian, which means that they're probably spoken or uh, come from the same people. However, there are also about 400 matches with Phoenician, um, but an entirely different set of sound correspondences, meaning that they they uh, were spoken by it was spoken by a different people. It came from a different source. It changed in different ways. Now Phoenician is basically the same as Hebrew. Uh, Hebrew is simply a Hebrew and Phoenician and Canaanite are all three the same language, different dialects. Hebrew is the Israelite dialect of Phoenician or Canaanite. Um, However, Phoenician, um, well, we'll get into that later. Um, so many ask why the Nephites and Mulekites could not understand each other if they both left Jerusalem just 400 years earlier, for a number of reasons. In fact, let me explain at least three reasons. Uh, first of all, tone, accent patterns can throw people off and can change languages in, in uh, ways that make it very quickly non-understandable. For example, uh, my, I, I just retired from teaching English for 35 years and I will uh, use, do this exercise. Well, let's see. No, let me back up a little bit. Take a couple of sentences. For example, what's that in the road ahead? Versus what's that in the road ahead? Now see those, they're both questions, and so you think, well, a question has a rising tone at the end, right? But even though they're both questions, they have different tone patterns, and the tone pattern gives it a different meaning. Um, let me give you another example. I, I, this I say to my classes. Um, I'm going to say something, and you tell me what I said. And this is English. Mechanical ability. Mechanical ability. Now, what I really said was mechanical ability, but the uh, general accent or tone pattern on both of those words, they're both four-syllable words, and generally the second syllable is, is stressed or accented, mechanical ability. All I did was remove that accent or, or uh, stress from the second syllable and put it on the first and third instead, mechanical ability and nobody understood it. Just with a different accent, different tone pattern. Um, now let me give you another example. This is a sentence, this is a complete sentence that we used to say in the neighborhood I grew up in, in Los Angeles. All the kids in the neighborhood would say this full sentence this way. Oh. Uh oh. -huh. Uh -huh. And you all know exactly what I said, right? I don't know. Now it's interesting because in the first one, I give you all of the sounds, I give you all of the consonants and the vowels, but a different tone pattern, and everybody misses it. But on the second one, I give you none of the sounds, none of the consonants or vowels, only the tone pattern. And you know exactly what I said without any of the sounds. 
Collins. Now, isn't that interesting? What is a cognate? A cognate is a word having the same linguistic origin as another, from oh. the same original word or root. For an example, the English word is and German is both come from the Latin s. Another example is the English word night. In French, it is nuit. In Spanish, it is noche. In German, it is noct, which all derives from the Indo-European term nook. We can use this as a means of identifying specific time periods of cultural exchange between different groups of people. In the case of the Aboriginal inhabitants of the Americas, we see multiple instances of different indigenous language families sharing cognates with Aramaic, Hebraic, Egyptian, and Phoenician words and names. Dr. Brian D. Stubbs has found several traces of these language families in Uto Aztecan languages like Nahuatl. His book, Uto Aztecan, a comparative vocabulary, is the most extensive in the field. In it, he reveals with his meticulous research that the number of correspondents discovered far exceeds any number of random chances according to linguistic theory. In the book, Carolina Genesis, Beyond the Color Line, it reads, The earliest appearance of a variant of the name Amorgarikakan in the land that eventually became the United States is recorded by the Spanish in 1680 as Amacaris, a tribal name contained in the title of the Florida mission, El Nombre de Dios de Amacaris which is acknowledged as a Yamasi town located in the Temuca province of La Florida. Swanton applied the name Amacaris as the original name for the Yamacra. An abbreviated form of the name Yamasi appears in South Carolina recorded as Amasi. The compounded prefixes Amorgari and Amakari are similar. Amor or Ama from the Spanish denotes beloved probably derived from the Sephardic Amora, and Gari or Gale denotes people in the Muskegon language family. And so Amagari and Amakari of a bilingual etymology is roughly translated as the beloved people. South Carolina public records prior to the Yamasi War in 1715 mentioned the Yamasi as Amakario or Amakario of the West Dogo, also known as the Savannah River Yamiscaron, a variant for Yamasi was given by Francisco de Chicora circa 1721 when he was held in captivity by the Spanish. It goes on to read, the Matoic suffix kakan implies the act of teaching, interpreting, or speaking. Therefore, Amorgari kakan we're talking the Khan. That means you're talking the priesthood. Just look how they interpreted it. And look how we've already connected through the Hebrew. And again, great work to dialogue. Circa 1721, when he was held in captivity by the Spanish. It goes on to read. The Matoic suffix kakan implies the act of teaching, interpreting, or speaking. Therefore, Amogar kakan can be teaching, interpreting, or speaking. Teaching what? Teaching the law, Monaga, the code, so that you can rock in your land. This is not Christianity. It's not religion at all. It's a code, man. It's a frequency to tune a community up to a frequency not their frequency but a frequency above the barrier above the hijack you need to know not to slay your brother not to steal from your neighbor not to bear false witness not to have covetous and jealousies in your heart not to put no power before your power for show how to rest together in solidarity because that's the sign between you and Hawa. They had all this here already, man. Cootie Mayo gonna let you know that. Kakan, we're talking about the teaching. We're talking about the writings. Let's go. Can be translated as the beloved people who interpret. 
within the context. Interpret what? For Daniel to interpret, for Kiliab to interpret, he had to interpret with wisdom. He had to interpret with prophecy. He had to interpret with Ama. You need Ama. We're talking Amar Khan. <laughs> Amar bin Amar. We're talking Ama <laughs> at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. You're talking Ama. Amazon. Of the name Amorgarika Khan, the native root words appear to have derived from the Muskegon and the Matoic language family, expanding the Atlantic seaboard south to north or vice versa. So, simply put, we can identify the cultural fusion of the Hebrews and the Aboriginals of America by following the linguistic connections of the two groups. Let's go. All of the different appellations of Moor, Amogari, Amakari, Amakario, Amorium, Amorica, etc. all go. point to the same source. Bang. Let's go. Now, before we continue, I would like to bring this in full context. If you watched the last two episodes of the Inquisition series, The Conspiracy of Chronology, outlining the proof of colonial powers by way of the Vatican altering and disguising history, and Mafioso detailing how the Pope has gained control over most of the world and the people in it by means of papal bulls, you'd see that the objective of the Roman Catholic Church is to gain legal and political jurisdiction over the original civilizations of Earth by means of ecclesiastical systems and the altering of cultural or religious narratives for means of gain. An ecclesiastical system, in short, is a system in which an executor, which could be a pope, chief, pastor, sheep, high priest, etc., holds title to property and manages said assets for the benefit of another, which in this particular case would be the church. This is the same as what we would call in today's time trust or the concept of trust law. The entire point of the claim that Hebrews were the first to dwell in or establish civilization in America, particularly is to place their own historical marker in which they have legal jurisdiction based upon the fact that their claim to the land can be proven further in history. The Don't let that go over your head bone. Don't let that go over your head bone. Can we back it up for a stack? Can we can we get it back for a stack? Dialogue, stop it. You too hot out here, dialogue. What'd he just say? <clears throat> hey, we get into the dismount. But you know how we do our dismounts. I told you, Nadia Komenichi, perfect 10, perfect 9 code. You can't ignore this system that we're in, right? We're in it, man, right? So, let me plug up my battery and make sure I got plenty of juice for this dismount. I don't want no problem. All right, man, we can't ignore. So, we're going to learn every level of it. I don't ignore the UCC flow. I just don't want you to, you know, there's a tendency to take that and act like um, that is in substitution or that that is in that is the true breakdown of what the scriptures are saying <laughs> to get out get out of the you know uh admiralty situation and we, we we understand the admiralty flow you have to get coded up or else nothing else is going to be in con their system none of this makes any sense or you knowing it how much you know it don't it don't matter if you're not in code it don't matter if you don't got your dracons if you if you got you know, issues with the creator, it don't matter. But when you get the code flow, then you can start connecting all this other flow, right? All how their system works, right? And just like to do, just like my bro just broke down very clearly. When you connect the Hebrew flow as not mythological, but factual, right? When it's factual, when you are the Swan Knights, Monaga, 
When you are the cons of India Superior Calais Luce. When you are the cons of Preston John. Khalif. Then you have jurisdiction over them, right? This is what the war is about. This is what the Kum says fighting for. Dragon Canoe. Hawata. Joseph and them, right? This is what they fighting for. Joshua. Who divided the lands for the tribe. Because you have jurisdiction. Joshua divided the lands for the tribe. We're not talking their Canaanites. We're talking Canaan, Hanan, Anion. Here it is again. Particularly is to place their own historical marker in which they have legal jurisdiction. Based Back it up. Back it up. You're just popping off, man. Call in today's time trust or the concept of trust law. The entire point of the claim that Hebrews were the first to dwell in or establish civilization in America, mm -hmm. particularly is to place their own historical marker in which they have legal jurisdiction based upon the fact that their claim to the land can be proven further in history. These lost, quote unquote, Hebrews have migrated to the Americas, fleeing persecution, are the property of the express trust of the Vatican. Thus, mm. meaning the territories in which they domicile and own are also property of the Pope. So they did a switcheroo. This is your land by jurisdiction, but now what? The Batu Khan, right? The Vatican again, it's just Batu. Bat is the house in Hebrew, the house, the tent. Khan. Right, the condom, the kingdom, the the priesthood. The house of the priesthood, which they turn into Vatican. Now you got a pope and set up a preston. And this source that you see that he's showing right now is actually an incredible source. I believe Aqua Tide Battle dropped this on us first. So, um, you know, I don't know if he sourced everything at the end or not, but I want you to know where everything's coming from. Right, We have to go to Forbidden Histories of America. We have to go to the drop library with this sources if you go to 432thedrop.com and we're under construction but the sources and the the uh, links are still workable everything still works in there and we got a lot to add still as we build a new library that's more searchable and all that so just be patient with us we are building managa for you for drop nation allow while but your aqua time you know gets a lot of credit man for being the record keeper and i want to make sure she gets all her just do, man, for all the recon she's brought throughout the years. And this source right here, we're going to back it up one more time because we got to get it again <laughs> for the dismount. Uh, but, yeah, this source, man, was dropped by Aqua Tide that time, man. So, you know, hey, as long as Nagas pick up the recon and continue, you know, they don't have to come back and say, hey, man, we got this from, you know, Drop Nation this. We, we got to hear that. But. You know, when we can give just do, we're going to give just do. You know what I'm saying? Because the aqua, you know, and all the ox, you know what I'm saying? And they love to Big Timmy because this drop right here was dropped uh, by the Bro Dialogue, I believe, months ago, right? Uh, seven months ago. You know what I'm saying? 379, man, this, this thing should have 3 million views. You know what I'm saying? So clearly... It's been slept on, man, and, you know, I just want to tell the bro, not no more. We ain't sleeping. We wide awake. Your recon is amazing, and we just want to make sure all the connections are there so the Nagas know where they, you know, where they can continue to get that, you know, that water. You know what I'm saying? Let them know where the water is is all we saying, you know. Let them know where the water is because if they come here and they see this, they'll be like, all right, cool, but where's the water? Like, you know, where's it coming from? You know what I'm saying? Where Sawa built, you know, this this mar, this this great, you know, drop, this wave, you know, they you got to lead them back to the wave, so that they can be a part of the wave, that they can add their drop and continue to flow. So we appreciate where you are taking it, Managa, and it's exactly where we want to go, especially with the Mormon Mormoni flow. We gotta dig deeper on the Mormon flow, but you gotta let them know, let them know, so that they can get that water, so that they can. See Tara Zanta and say, okay, what's Tara Zanta? Tara Zanta, Tara Zanta, Tara Zanta, wow.
if you don't bring them to Tarzan to Managa, in Antarctica, they ain't getting that water. They got to get the water. They got to get Moroni. You talking Moroni? You talking Tarzan? And this map got dropped by Seku. So if Seku didn't drop this map on us, we wouldn't be talking Tarzan. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, all, all this, not in this particular perspective, right? And now you're talking Tarzan because the concept cool dropped it on Drop Nation. You know what I mean? So that's how Drop Nation operate. They got to know where that water's flowing from. They got to get that water. You know what I mean? So yeah, go dig on it, man. And let's get it back one more time for a stack because this is exactly what time we are. This is exactly what time we are. A hot to my con, Delbert, Delbert Blair. He got some great drop that I want to definitely uh, connect with my bro so I can share it with the tribe as well. Dig it on this exact situation he talking about. Let's go. To property. A man just, just said assets, assets for the benefit, for the benefit of, another, of another, which, which in, in this, this particular, particular case, case narratives for means of gain. An ecclesiastical system, in short, is a system in which an executor, which should be a pope, chief, pastor, sheep, high priest, etc. holds title to property and manages said assets for the benefit of another, which in this particular case would be the church. This is the same as what we would call in today's time trust or the concept of trust law. The entire point of the claim that Hebrews were the first to dwell in or establish civilization in America particularly is to place their own historical marker in which they have legal jurisdiction based upon the fact that their claim to the land can be proven further in history. These lost quote unquote Hebrews have migrated to the Americas fleeing persecution. Original history of ancient America founded upon the ruins of antiquity are the property of the express trust of the Vatican. Thus meaning the territories in which they domicile and Identity of the Aborigines with the people of Tyrus and Israel, man. This is this is documents. And in this, they got the Tecumse flow, link it to Tecumse directly with the Hebrews. We're gonna go, we're gonna get that back for a stack. So this is linking Israel directly with Tecumse. And this is what we keep telling you, 1812, 1811. This was your last stand, my naga. The Tecumse flow, the war of eighteen twelve. Shikamagua War, Cherokee War, Seminole War, Creek War, that popped off all the wars after that. We're going to get that again. All that, all that is Israel fighting, trying to unite. But just like the Coombs said, we're trying to unite with the Chickasaw and the Choctaw. They, they had different interests, right? Some were making treaties, and this is the heartbreaking part that we're all we all got family on both sides. You know what I'm saying? We all got connections to both sides that by this by this time, you know what I'm saying? So we gotta feel both sides of this. No one's saying, I'm pure Judah, da da da. I'm pure Ephraim. Nah, man. We all got family on the Moabite side of this side, the Esau. We all got family connected to all this. So we all coming back as a family. We all want to be ahead of the hijack. We wanna be above the barrier of hijack city. This is how we get here. We got to drop the jealousy, drop the covenants, get back in order. Hawa got the order. You rocking in the kingdom or you ain't. You see what happened when you don't. You see you become the tail. You don't want to be the tail. You hate us that much that you don't know how to follow. And my knowledge do we hate each other that much that we don't even know, you know, how to lead. We don't know how to lead all the tribes that we're supposed to lead because we find each other. We're supposed to be leaders. And within our leadership, we also got to know how to follow. It doesn't make you a follower. <laughs> I mean, it makes you someone who is wise enough to seek wisdom, to seek the creator. To seek the creator, to desire that you are following a frequency and however the creator manifests you're supposed to be proud of that whether that's in your ak whether that's in your aqua whether that's in your dracon however that frequency 
That's your garden. Those are your flowers, your food. However, that frequency is manifesting is Hawa. You love fruits and vegetables more than your ak, more than your brother. You love cities of gold more than your sister. So this link right here, go get this drop. You can get it at 432thedrop.com. Password is 1234. Still 1234. It's been 1234 for a long time. You can access the drop library at my noggin. All right, and get the drop, man, for the dismount. And all of us are also property of the cloak. The Johnson versus Emmentoge case of 1823 proves this. Chief Justice Marshall directly traced an English title to land in America to the discovery, quote unquote, of America by the Italian explorer John Cabot. Acting pursuant to letters patent issued in 1498 by King Henry VII's Royal Commission. Pertaining to case law, the Johnson v. Emmentos case of 1823 proves this. Chief Justice Marshall directly traced an English title to land in America to the quote-unquote discovery of America by Italian explorer John Cabot. Acting pursuant to letters patent issued in 1498 by King Henry VII's Royal Commission, this title arose out of the exclusive right of the discoverer to appropriate the lands occupied by the Indians on the basis of a claim of ultimate dominion to be in themselves even while yet in the possession of the natives. Mm. The patent granted the right to seek out, discover, and find whatsoever isles, countries, regions, or provinces of the heathen and infidels whatsoever they be and in what part of the world soever they be. By way of his feudal bond to the Pope as a subditi or a subject Catholic prince and by the word of the letters patent, it is inferred that Henry VII was governed by and to the papal bulls Romanus Pantifix issued in 1455 and Intercatera issued in 1493. And I always give the bro Lex Will his prosperous and so much, man, so much drive. <coughs> really inspired the whole community, man, to pop off and, you know, have the confidence, you know, in the recon, you know what I mean? And not nah, just been popping off, man. So the water to the con Lex Will, man, it's... It's doomed diversion, you know. I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta give him where, where the water flow. You know what I'm saying? You know, he just dropping it, but we got a whole story behind it. You know what I'm saying? So I gotta connect you to the water as we get the drop. Hey, but that water's flowing. As long as the water's flowing, man, the water's flowing. Allow. Respectively, decreed by Pope Nicholas V and Pope Alexander VI, giving them a lawful claim to the justification of their continued presence in these said regions. Understanding and comprehending this information begins to bring the entirety of the story into full perspective. Contact with the Americas happened centuries before the arrival of Columbus. These Armorican tribes originally sailed to the west coast of South America, migrated north, and established colonies all throughout the Americas. This is where all the different appellations of the name America likely come from. From the Amarisque mountain ranges of Nicaragua, to the Amacaris tribes of the Atlantic coast, to the Ladino Chicameca that have been both culturally and genetically tied to the Amorium, which are crypto-Jews. Secret adherence to the code, right? They had to be low key, you know what I mean, about the code they kept. Because it was convert or die. Convert or die to Islam. Convert or die to Christianity. They had to be low key with it. Like it's just surviving at this point. All these different terms can be connected back to the region of Armorica which has interesting ties with the Portuguese. In 1492, it is believed that Salvador Fernando Zarco, better known as Cristobal Colón, mm -hmm. or Christopher Columbus, set sail with three small ships to the New World, quote 
quote. Modern scholars and Columbus hobbyists try to associate Salvador or Christopher with Spain, Catalonia, and even Greece. But there is strong case to be made Portuguese. According to Augusto Barreto, a Portuguese historian and fencer, Columbus was the bastard son of Prince Fernando, the grandson of navigator Joao Zarco, a converso Jew. The Portuguese origin thesis has him using Cologne as a pseudonym. Keep in mind that in 12 of expulsion was issued by King Edward I of England to expel all Jews from the Kingdom of England. Luis de Torres was employed by Columbus as an interpreter on his first voyage to the New World. Prior to this, de Torres held a position with Juan Cacón, governor of Murcia, a province where there was a large number of Jews. And why do they want to expel you? Like, they know they can't conquer you. Like, they just got to push you somewhere, you know, uh, bring you on boats from here somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? If the Portuguese king is looking like you and Columbus is looking like you and old Charles, black ass King Charles, is look, then my nugget, do you see the more and more war, the black on black, so called, right? The Spanish didn't look like what you think, man. They looked dark. These were all more, amor. It's all about amor, right? Amor, it's been amor. It's all about these so called black lands, man. The king of the blacks, man. All right, all right, I'm trying to put it in <laughs> shock, shock language, all right? The black king, right? Who's going to be the greatest black king? Which black tribe is the hardest? Which gang's the hardest? It's the same thing today. But it was like Game of Thrones back then. You know what I'm saying? The ones that was coded up, you know what I'm saying? They had the Magi. But they had to go crypto. They had to go under, right? Let's go. For Jews as a Hebrew interpreter. Because he had Hebraic origins, and this was during the era of the Inquisition, it was necessary for him to convert to Catholicism which he did the day before the Nina and Santa Maria set yeah. sail on August 2nd of 1492. So it wasn't a Christian. also coincided with the expulsion of all Jews from Spain. So in short, Columbus was likely a Jew. So why is this relevant? Just stick with me. I promise this will make sense soon. <laughs> Interestingly enough, it is a known fact that some of the early inhabitants of that area were known as Iberi or as Hiberi, basically meaning Hebrews. From Spain, the Hiberi moved onwards into Gaul and the British Isles. The Celtic inhabitants of Britain were all referred to as Iberi or Iberni, meaning Hebrews, by themselves and by others. And the name Iberi very frequently occurs in ethnic and place names of Western Celtic peoples. The Iberian Peninsula was named after the Iberian. Hebrews who once dwelt there, but later left moving into Gaul and Britain. Tracing this history, we can see that it's right quick as we make this dismount. That's a great point when he talks about the Hebrews in Britain because Tacombe say had an alliance with some of these British, some of these Britons, and they make it seem like it was with these white British, yada yada. But based on what he just said and what we already know, these were Nagas. Tacombe say made an alliance, you know, or tried to make an alliance with some Nagas with the Britain flow, you know what I mean? But he was double crossed pretty much by everybody at the end of the day. Everybody. You know, signed these treaties, made these treaties, these treaties of peace and friendship. Psalms 83, man, confederate against us, all these tribes, because you are the swan knights. You are the true gatekeepers, the true landlords, landowners, man, you know, gave him this birthright. Hawaii gave us this land as birthright. We don't say we own the land over the creator. We say it was given to us as a birthright. You got jurisdiction here. You got to walk in your shoes. You got to claim it. 
Then you could talk UCCs and all that other stuff, but that system is falling. That system is a wrap. Yeah, you can get cozy with it, but for how long? The truth is back. Oh, I don't care about no UCC. Oh, I don't care about your genealogies. Oh, I care about the truth. Are you keeping the code? <laughs> Are you ready to rise and be a kingdom again? that these groups of people prior to Catholic influence held their own forms of political governance before being overthrown by the Roman Catholic powers. We see this is as early as the wars between the Romans and the Druids, and as late as the Jacobite Rebellion and the formation of the Covenanteers, which was an attempt to maintain their divine right of kingship by means of creating a trust, historically known as the Solemn League of Assembly, to remove themselves from under the ecclesiastical jurisdiction of the Catholic yeah. Church. And we're going to talk about Yeah, we're going to talk about uh, the Secret Covenant. Aqua Tracy just dropped something called the Secret Covenant. So uh, while they talking covenants, we talk covenants. But it is mine. The schism lasted over 800 years between Catholics and the groups of people who were the Hebrews. Throughout this time, many of these Hebrews were made into vassals for various nations that were being controlled by the Roman Curia. These vassals were oftentimes referred to as different appellations of the word Mar or Moor. These Mars or Moors were oftentimes vassals for nations held by puppet leaders with Roman Catholic roots. This was also mentioned in our last episode, Mafioso, how the crown. It's kind of deep. I mean, are the Moors today also vassals <laughs> uh, by other groups? So they've been vassals before. That don't mean that all the real Nagas was being used as vassals. The Kumse wasn't a vassal for them. That's what the fight was about. But the treaties of pieces of friendship means you made it. You made a deal with the devil. You made a deal to be vassals. They don't describe all black people. That describes y'all. That's what y'all did. Your tribes. This is us. This is you. We all got to come claim. Who's the vassals to this day? The crown of Aragon was established by the Catholic crown under the papal bull attorney regis, which granted these Mars or Moors status under their particular feudal system. Mm, status, huh? In closing, the area known as Arcerith biblically isn't in America, but in Europe. And furthermore, it is a region in which this group of people passed through and not settled in. The tribes that war with King Tiglar Pileser and found peace with Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, became a conglomerate of people known as Sumerians or Omri who migrated through Europe or Arcturus into Northwest Europe specifically with other Germanic tribes. From there, they grew their own culture uninfluenced by the outside world until the time of Frankish King Charlemagne. By this time, many of these Omri were dwelling in the region of Armorica and were made into vassals of the Roman Catholic Church. This is happening around the same time in which these Armoricans are documented as having early settlements in America, thus giving them claim to the land prior to colonialization, according to their maxims of law. From this is where the multitude of Freemasonic and Jesuit connections are made correlating Hebrews and the Americas. The vassals in which the Catholics used to perpetuate this narrative, the Mars or the Moors, were utilized specifically to push this understanding from a doctrinal standpoint. Hey. Shout out to the team, man. We did it again on praise to most you know, we 
say most high over everything. You know, because that's that's where it starts. <laughs> and uh, at the end of the day, that's where it you know, concludes. You know what I'm saying? Is it MHOE? Is it most everything, boss, man? All right, all right, all right. We're concluding our dismount. Let's uh, see where we at, man. I know we've been talking a long time. Hey, you still here surfing away with a night? Where we at, man? Uh, if you still here surfing away, you know, hit me off with some uh, blue, purple, red, you know, uh, uh, heart bones, man. Give me some blue, purple, red hearts if you still here for the dismount. See, I got y'all checking in so I know who's who. I know if I got some nines, <laughs> you made it to the intro. If I got some some dragons, some phineases popping off. You made it look more. If I see blue, purple, red, heart bones, man, white linen, gold thread, I know you made it to the dismount, my nugget. You a special type of nugget. You a special breed of nugget. You a focused nugget, man. I appreciate your concentration. Con, the con is concentrate. Yeah, let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. We got a war pad. Gwyneth, my naga. Gwyneth, my naga. All right. <laughs> oh, little known spot, but Gwyneth is actually pretty active, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my nagas in Gwyneth County, Georgia, man. Hey, out to all my Georgian cons, man. Gwyneth County, man. What does this remind you of? You got pressed to 122, right? This is 123. <laughs> we just read the whole Swan Knight flow from the Elihu project that was taken off the internet. So I printed out the joints. I put them in the drop chatter in the chat room. All right. And just reading off this list here from the Makir to Droz Ben Judah flow. We're looking at Kings and Septimania. We're talking Americans. All right. We're talking Americans. <laughs> so, Prince Madoc, a wand of Gwyneth Madoc. <clears throat> Do we see clearly? Gwyneth, man. All right, we've been talking Georgia, Babylon the whole time. The whole dang time. We've been talking Georgia, Babylon. And we think in Kingdom Georgia like Russia, which is cool because, you know, Russia is Rus, right? Russia is the Rus. But it's even closer. <laughs> you know, say it with me, man. Objects and mirror to be closer than they appear. Hua, <laughs> hua. We talking Gwyneth because they talking Gwyneth, right? But they're spelling it G-W-Y-N-E-D-D. -D. This is for the dead now. This is for you, wave surfers, man. Look how the Gwyneth title was flowing. <clears throat> These are the kings of Kalelus, right? Prince Lancelot of Kalelus. Rhoda, right? Kalelus. Israel the fifth. All the stuff we just read about. This is the king's list. Pre king of the Sultex, right? We also got the Amazon Queen's list last time. We we're going to bounce back and forth. We got Prince Makir of Kalelus, who is America, right? America, right? Priest King. He is mixed quote to the Toltec. Cousin of Israel the Fifth. Is this play play or is this forbidden history? Kalelus. Married to Shemina. We're talking Amazon Queens. Amazing Queen. We got Kitsukawado popping off of Rhoda, Priest King of the Toltecs, younger brother of King Israel. The fourth, so you can't front on Israel, Managi. This is Kalelu's history. This is priest king history in America. King Israel the third, Septimus of Rhoda, Kalelu's. This is no play play. My kid. We're talking Gwyneth. King Iago, who is Jacob's son of Israel, Ben Israel Hot Rodri of Gwyneth. So what's this Gwyneth title got to do with things? And why the other G W Y N E D D? Uh, we talking Gwyneth. 
And uh, man, love to the bro swamp stories. I'm, I'm looking at the swamp stories that took place in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Shout out to the cons of Stone Mountain, man. I know y'all going up, but we con enough, man. We priest enough. We frequency enough, but I know you're doing it with us, man. No more do we got to murder each other and break our code because we're breaking our frequency. We're breaking our agreement. We are not each other's enemy. We got to frequency up. It's time, man. It's time for the unity. That's our greatest weapon, man. If we ever needed a weapon, we need unity. We can agree most high over everything, right? We can agree most high over everything, God. Huh? Oh, Gwenny, Gwenny, Gwenny. Gwenny. Gwenny County, Georgia. Gwenny. <laughs> right. But now they're spelling it G-W-I-N-N-E-T-T. -T. So instead of the DD, they put the TT. Instead of the GWY, they put GWI, right? Gwyneth is Gwyneth. G-W-Y-N-E-D-D. G-W-I-N-E-T-T. Say it with me. Body bag for the illusion for the dismount. Georgia, my nugget. Georgia. Shout out Ray Charles, man. Come on, man. Why y'all playing? Exilark, man. Exilarks, man. Okay, okay, we play. We play. We play. Sometimes they like to play for you know, sometimes they like to play for the dismount. They talk in Georgia, Anaga. We talk in Georgia. Gwinnett, Georgia. They talk in Georgia. Georgia. We talking Roger here, Roger Chola. We talking the Exilarchs of the cons of the Hebrews in Babylon and Georgia. Gwinnett, Georgia. Kingdom of Georgia is the kingdom of the Hebrews right here in America. And they're hiding it by switching the I's to I's and D's to T's. What else are they hiding? Albany, right? <laughs> uh, Amazon Queens, Albany, right? For the dismount. Greatest dismount of all time, man. I told y'all, man. Remember, the queens are popping off, right? Monogamy. Around 116 AD, right? Okay, this is all America. The Remani Romans under Emperor Trajan attacked and destroyed Parthia, which is the city of Ophir, cities of gold, the home city of the Parthian Empire, which was at the mouth of the Swan Barbar. Canyon, now under the ocean, boss, they established a secret Remani colony with this new capital of Barbona, like Barbary, like Barbar. Let's get it for the dismount. North of the Tamala Swan River, Arid not Eridanus or Dan, right? The name of the region was originally called Barbar. Swan in Hebrew is Barbar, Barbia. Barabia. We're talking swans, swan knights and forbidden histories. And now we got swan knights on the on the female side, on the aqua side, when we're talking about Amazon Queens. So the swan title was apparent in the royal men and royal women. You understand? You understand? They're talking Albany, right? <laughs> At the bottom it says what? The two leading families of these Barbars or Berbers were the Barbarossa. So we got to talk Barbarossa family next time. And the Reese or Rus families, which were branches of the ruling royal family of Rhoda, 
and the Rubani or Lubani or Albany, boss. <laughs> you got Albany, New York. We said that last time. One of the family in the comments left to you. You said, ain't there an Albany, Georgia, boss? And I said, Ugh. I said, Georgia on my mind again. For the dismount, we talking swans. <laughs> we back to where we started. We talking swans. We talking Albany. Because they talking Albany, boss. Albany is Lubani or Rubani, like the tribe of Reuben. And a lot of them will say that these are queens of the Rabadi, Gadi, Mani, Gad, Manasseh, Northern Tribes, Southern Tribes, all happening here in America. Yes, boss. There's an Albany, Georgia, boss. I'm out of here, man. I'm out of here, boss. I'm out of here, boss. Albany is located in a region which was long inhabited by the creek. I'm out of here, boss. What'd they just say? Albany. Okay, let's put it together. Albany, right? Albany for this amount. Albany. <laughs> let's breathe through this. Albany is connected with the ruling royal family of Hebrews, the Barbars, the Swan Knights. On the women and the men's side, the Rubani, like tribe, are also called the Lubani or the Albany, boss. We're talking Hebrews right here in America, boss. Amazon Queens, boss. It's fighting the Spaniards in 1530, boss. And you telling me that the Albany is also the creek? Whoa. Hold up, boss. Hold up. You telling me that all of the Rubani or these ruling families are also connected with the creek? And I've been telling you, we've been telling you, America's been at war ninety three percent of the time, which is really a hundred percent because we're talking the hijack invasion. And the Albany is the creek, and the creek are rocking with the Kumsay, the Hebrew Naga. That's tribing up the Nagas. All hijacks. Is that what we're saying, boss, for the dismount? <laughs> hey, man. We on a war path, man. Yeah, the Indian War. American War. Tribal War. More and more. Huh? Keep the cold. <laughs> KTC, you know what I mean? I mean, keep the cold. Enjoy Shabbat chilling in my robe. Hey, that's Clan Ross at your front door. You gonna pay your weight in Aztec gold. Free throw. <laughs> Nipsey Hussle, let them wings grow. He gonna hit us with a free flow. Hitting Crenshaw in a green low. Let go. KTC, you know how we do. Put our power first, we never lose. The Kumse was tribed up with the creek. And even after they killed the Kumse, the creek war continued. The Cherokee Creek Wars continued. This was still the Shikamagwa, which was just was named after the River of Death. It wasn't what they called themselves. They were named after the River of Death, called the Shikamagwa River. But who are they really? They're just being named after things, named after rivers. <laughs> rivers of Death, because it's the American Holocaust. And fighting side by side with Big Tech, Big Tecumse, are the Creek. Let's get it. You ain't stop fighting, my nigga. You ain't stop fighting, man. The creek are the Albany. The 
Creek or the Albany. Albany, Albany, or the Rubani, Lubani, <laughs> or as they just said it, Albany. And there's an Albany, Georgia. There's an Albany, Georgia. What? And we're talking Kandawi, son of Preston John of Babylon in Georgia. And we got Georgia on our mind. We're talking Gwinnett. And Gwinnett, Gwinnett in Georgia. Gwinnett is a kingdom. Wanaka, Gwinnett is a kingdom. Gwinnett is a kingdom that the Makir family is sharing the title of this Gwinnett. To get all this drop and the drop, drop, chatter, chat to chat, chatter. Um, you know, we lay it out. You know, we you know, do our best to get these records, you know, PDF what we can, when we can. And uh, again, Aqua Tracy Lett, as we talk Santa Barbara for the dismount, has uh, given some great PDFs. So I'm just going to pull up, you know, at least one of them, at least one or two of them. I know I know. I said we're going to, uh, you know, <laughs> do our intro with the Aqua Tracy Lett. I apologize. It's going to be the outro, but we got it. We got it, Aqua. We appreciate everything you've been building with and giving us, man. And um, all my Aquas, man, Ty Badzan and all the great Aquas throughout the years, Kanaan. man. Same thing as Kaden, Kana, let's get it. Anna, Kingdom, King of Gwynedd. Gwynedd, back it up. In. Let it clear up, man. You know, you already know, man. We on the end. <laughs> we on the outro. That's it, man. You know how they do us, man. We, we made it this far. <laughs> we gonna land. We might land this ship, and we might just keep going, man. You know what I'm saying? We talking going. Let's get it, man. It's off the plate, play, man. Let's go. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Oh, wow, wow. Let's go, let's go. N or C H U N. Kenka, Kenka, <laughs> Kana, all right, son of Jacob. Let's go. Eight, nine, nine hundred, one thousand. You know, also right up with. You're trying to blur us out, man. You know, this lost hang in this flow, this kingdom. Hang in of there. Sept, Sept means seven after the seven cities of gold. Whether we're talking Shiva or Septimania kingdom. See the male side of things, right? All the way up to Prince Madoc, which I just said, you know, it all connects right back. Like, they want to connect to Prince Madoc. We're talking Hebrew stick. Right, so King Awan, Grufford, the second. Now, this Canaan is spelled C Y N A N, but it's Kana. Same thing as Canaan, Kana, Hana. Kingdom, King of Gwynedd. Gwynedd. That's 1055. All right. Gwynedd. You got Prince Kana. Iago, which is just Jacob, my name. Mm -hmm. Kana, right? They spell C Y N or C H U N. Kana. <laughs> Kinka, Kinka. Kana, Kana. Kana, all right. Son of Jacob. How about read? Uh huh. Still talk, still talk about the Rotus, right? And he marries Princess Rognald of Dublin. King Iago, again, is Jacob. Uh -huh. In Israel, just check it out. Younger brother of Isaac, who is Hawamar, gets a quadro of the tall tanks. Whoa. And, and you got the drive. You read it. But notice he's also of Gwynedd, my naga. Gwynedd. Georgia, because we talking Georgia, because Georgia's on our mind. 
<laughs> Gwinnett, Georgia, Monaga. So this is mind blasting drop. <clears throat> As we bring it on home, that when we talk Babylon and Georgia, we still talk in America, man. Georgia is the original Georgia. The Atlanta is still connected with Atlantis. You dig? Or you talking about OG? You talk Egypt is coming out of Atlanta, so OG it also got to be right here, boss. Got to be right here. And we just talking Georgia for the dismount. We also been talking bar bar, a bar, okay. Yeah, Santa Barbara. And I was just looking at a couple of things, you know, how did a uh, barber get its name? How did Santa Barbara? Who's Santa Barbara? Who is Santa Barbara? Uh, is it a person or are they just hiding the baba? Are they hiding the swan? Are they hiding you? Are they hiding the knock? Let's get it big. All right, uh, Spanish explorer Sebastian Viscano sailed through the channel between Santa Barbara and Channel Islands in December 1602. All right, the channel was named Santa Barbara because the ship traveled through this area on St. Barbara's Feast Day. Come on, man. This is their cover-up of what the Babar is really popping off in America. They don't want to say this is Babar. <laughs> they can't They can't give it that, you know, uh, ancient connection, right? The Babar, no. They got to say it's named after a saint, a martyr, right? A martyr. <clears throat> the town of Santa Barbara was not named until 1782 when the Presidio and Mission 1786 were founded. Now, 1786, what's happening with us, man? What's happening with us, man? America's been at war, you know. <laughs> at least 93% of the time. They said 1786. They're founding this baba Because they're passing through uh, St. Barbar's Feast day. Ain't that some shit? Ain't that so? Ain't that a quinky dink? Ain't that a coincidence? You just happen to be passing through Babar, ancient territory on St. Babar's feast day. Is that right? In 1786? What's happening with us? Shikamagua, Shikamagua, Shikamagua War. In the Shikamaga, where the Cherokee that signed no deals, made no treaties, with no hijacks. There were no hijacks allowed, and they fought to let them beyond through you. They didn't make no deal with no hijack, didn't sign no treaty. These are the Shikamaga that had to step up first from 1776 all down in the Kumse. Oh, and this Barbary War, my not. For the dismount, there's Babar War, Swan Knight War. We know it now. The Kumse War, we see it now. Creek is the Albany. We see that now. Is the Rubani flow? We see it now. This was your last stand. After this, they were still standing. You know what I'm saying? But it was a slow, <laughs> a slow demise. You know what I'm saying? But they were still standing. I got to ask you, when were you a slave? I'll wait. When did you have time to be an African uh, slave? When you were fighting in all these wars, you, your ancestors, all this time. Philippine wars were still niggas. Banana wars were still niggas. All these wars, no major war. Ask the nigga about the, about the war in 1939. Ask the Negro was being reclassified as black and color. War war where they dropping you know explosions on our dragons and everywhere else throughout the world. Cold war, all these front cover wars because they still are at war against the indigenous cons like they been. All these other wars were fronts to still keep their necks on the their foot on the neck bone of the Negro, right? Civil wars, all that. Where's that? Where's that? 
She could walk with war. 1786, what they doing? What they say they doing in Barbary? Santa Barbara? They just naming Santa Barbara? What they say? How did Santa Barbara get his name? For the discount. Who was Santa Barbara? Oh, yeah, the original town was named La Laguna de Concepciona. This is an interesting thing, too. All right, so 1786, this is when they're popping off, but we already are fighting our Chicamago War. So they're just hijacking the Barbary. They're hijacking the Barbar while they're saying that they're naming this town. They're hijacking it at the same time because we're at war. Chicamagua is the Barbar. The original name was La Laguna de Concepcion. I said, what's the meaning of Concepcion, boss? What are you trying to say? What are you trying to say, boss? What a dismount. When they say Concepcion, let's make it clear that they you can't get out of this first they said lagoon so a lagoon is a, <clears throat> a lake a pond all right water just think water okay what is concepcion concepcion typically feminine huh, santa barbara's in california queen khalifa is feminine it comes from the Christian Bible, okay, and it's made in honor of the Virgin Mary and the Immaculate Conception. I'm out of here, boss. I'm out of here. When you talk Barbar, and when you talk Barbar and Khalifa, I mean, you 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 really talking Miriam flow, you know, because their Virgin Mary is really the Hebrew Miriam. Miriam's son is actually the Joshua that we're you know <laughs> we're seeing because they got Mary and Jesus in the New Test as a reflection of Miriam and Joshua. Miriam is the sister of Moses, which makes Joshua the nephew of Moshe, which is why Moses in Deuteronomy 34 lays his hands on Joshua. His nephew passes the his mother is Miriam, not Virgin Mary. But we we section. So when they talk conception, we see the connection. When they talk conception, feminine, we're talking water, lagoon, and birth. <laughs> you're talking big mama, you're talking Queen Khalif, talking Lady Sheba, daughter of the oath, daughter of the cold, daughter of the seven cities of go. Oh, 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 oh. Let's go for the discipline. All right, all right. We talk Santa Barbara. We have to uh, get a hot to Iowa Tracy Let. Man, <laughs> these beautiful links. <clears throat> I've been talking, I've been talking. These links right here are beautiful, man. Just look at all these. You know, it goes on and on, man. It goes on and on and on. A lot of our original links, she PDF'd them from the beginning of our investigation. And this one really stuck out on the Barbary flow. I gotta find it, I gotta find it again. Uh-oh. Ooh, Graham Hancock. Oh, she got some drop. Book of Jasher. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, she got all the original genies. And see, this one says Princess Hannah, Rubadi, Gotti, Mani. And we just got that Rubadi is Albany. Hold up, man. You, you mind if I you mind if I surf the way? Surf the way? And I'm gonna find that Barbary link too. Hold up, man. Gotta make sure. Alright, I'm gonna go here first. I'm gonna go here first. Wow, wow. Let's go. Alright, alright. Just so not gonna know. Tracy Leg got the grow, got the glow. <laughs> okay. And again, I'm going to put these on the press the back three. Um, I believe I dropped a lot of these as well on the press the two, man. So, hey, I to all my con support and all the press the packs, all the eat the packs. I got for the new flat packs, still talking to flat drop one on one. 
Same from the genie link. All right, so this is the Princess Hannah of Rubadi, Gadi, and Mani, Reuben, Gad, Manasseh, Northern Tribes. And, you know, the King of Judah would also be the King of the Northern and the Southern Tribes, Managa. So this is just some great drive, man. Aqua, Tracy Lent, man, getting us PDF. Uh, there's also another one. Where it says Solomon, right? So we got the the aqua flow. You also got Solomon the second, Soli, Radan or Roda, King of Rubadi, Gadi, and Mani. Okay, okay. Again, all this is from genie.com. Sometimes they take the links down, but the Family take the time to uh, you, you know appreciate the journey enough to PDF this stuff, man. It's just, it's just I know it. I know it. You know, it takes a lot of time, man, to do it. So from the hard bone, we appreciate you, man, for breaking this down for us, man. Making sure we got it on our press the packs, and these are ways for us to preserve the knowledge, man. You know, like like time capsules, man. So a lot of work on flash drives, you know what I mean? So we just got the aqua flow of it. And this is the aqua the flow, Solomon II, Soli, Radan, King of Rubadi, God Imani. So just like the Amazon queens joining with their husbands, now we're seeing the link between husband and wife. They're both king and queen of Rubadi, Gadi, and Mani. God, God. Okay. Uh, I mean, we clear aqua. Surfing away with Aqua Tracy Lay. I gotta find this Barbary flow. We just had it. Okay, okay, there we go. Barbary trees. Look at this, man. Look at this stuff, man. It's despicable, man. Treaties of peace and friendship so they can hijack the real swan knight. So they can hijack the barbar. Oh, she got the secret Vatican briefings. Oh, man. Y'all fall back, man. <laughs> Y'all gonna get it on the next press to pay. So if they take the internet down, whether you got access to the internet or not, you got a flash drive with these links, these videos, you know what I'm saying, the books, all this drop, man. The the music tribe of music, man, we got y'all. And I, you know, look, we done been here before. The Barbary treaties, <laughs> the Barbar Swanite treaties, man. And all this does is put the Moors as a vassal for this corporation called the United States. Subjects of Tripoli and Barbary. So these bays and L's, these bay L's are now vassals to this hijack. They're now teamed up with it. Or the hijack went underground and now they're just behind the scenes using other people as straw men, right? as landlords with these Barbary treaties you know you can research it I'm showing you that it, this stuff exists this puts them you know in friendship right <laughs> the treaties a piece of friendship now they're working together they, they find each other goods they got to give it back they can't put each other in slavery. They got to work together. If somebody's, uh, you know, held high somewhere else. They got to help get, they got to help each other. You read it, man. You got it. Hey, hi, Aqua Tracy Lay. You know, reminding us that this ain't no play play. They got to help each other. <sighs> Protect each other. Protection. Man, this is despicable, man. You should be ashamed of yourselves, man. You did this when? What year? 1786. Ain't that what they just said? They found it. This Barbary flow? Santa Barbara? <laughs> Is the Barbary Treaty? Are you kidding me, man? For this mouth. 
Are you kidding me, man? You telling me? You telling us, man. You telling us, man, that you founded, so-called founded Santa Barbara, Khalifa, California, 1786, during the Chicago War, during the Barbary treaties that were made and put on the head bone of Dragon Canoe, Tecumseh, and the Cherokee Chicago, the Karaka, the Karakatai. Cherokee is Karaka, Karakatai. It ain't no ch. It's a cut, Kara, just like the Kara, the Pandians, the three Indians. Who is Preston John? We still going, man. This is Preston John, 123. We on the warpath, boss. You still with a Naga, man? <laughs> we still on the warpath. Six balls. 1786, boss. I'm out of here, man. Uh, we'll talk Aleppo Codex <laughs> in 124. We out of here, man. Um, I ain't got nothing to say, man. This is crazy talk, man. It's crazy talk, man. <laughs> 1786, they pop off the Barbary treaties. It's crazy talk. On the head bone of the Shikamaka War. Indian War. This is why we're on the war path, man. You kidding me, man? <laughs> is they playing Aqua Tracy? Ah uh, man, that's what it says, right? That the Babar, the Babar, the Babar treaties, the Babar Swan Knight treaties, they popped it off in 1786. A lot of why, man. A lot of why. And now we got the Babar War <laughs> around these Swan Knight treaties. But it has to do with America because we're still in America, boss. We're still in India, Tecumse. We're still in Chicago, Cherokee, Texas, India. We're still in Seminole Wars. So you can't tell me this Barbar War had nothing to do with America when you're making treaties of pieces of friendship at the same damn time. For the American land, everybody's busted. Everybody's caught red-handed. The water aqua Tracy land. We appreciate you. <laughs> we'll talk Aleppo Codex next time. I'm not. We'll talk Owaspi. Talk China. Uh, I think we have one more thing. You know, can we get one more? Oh yeah, a lot of time. For the dismount, the secret covenant. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, we're on this play play. They don't want us to know about the secret covenant, man. Aqua Tracy. <laughs> yeah, man. They try to hijack us with a secret covenant trap. Okay, okay. We gotta do this again. I ain't signing into nothing, man. I ain't making no deals with you, TikTok. I just wanna see what you're talking about, man. Stop playing. Let's just give us the drive, man. We ain't gonna make no deals, man. We patient kind. We're gonna figure this out. You guys, I want to share with you a secret covenant that you might or might not have heard about. 
The secret covenant was created by none other than the Rockefellers and maybe even someone even higher than them, let's be honest. Oh man, stop playing, man. <laughs> we wanna know. <laughs> We're gonna war path, man. Oh man. They don't want us to get this drop. They don't want us to get this disbow, man. They said, nah, man, it's too much. It's too wavy, man. You can't end with the secret covenant. Come on, man. Come on. Hawa, hawa. Get us through one more. One more link, man. One more link, hawa. Get us through one more. <laughs> Don't let them hijack us down. Get us through one more. Lawa. Let's go. I'm about to reload this. But this is their secret covenant and their clause of things they want to follow. And if you're a conspiracy theorist or a critical thinker and you're aware of what's been going on in the world, you know exactly how suitable this is. This is written word for word, and I want to read it to you. Okay, so bear with me. The secret covenant, an illusion that will be so large, so vast, it will escape their perception. Those who will see it will be thought of as insane. We'll create separate fronts to prevent them from seeing the connection between us. We will behave as if we are not connected to keep the illusion alive. Our goal will be accomplished one drop at a time so as to never bring suspicion upon ourselves. This will also prevent them from seeing the changes as they occur. We will, we will always, always stand, stand above, above the relative, relative field of their experience, for we know the secrets of the absolute. We will work together always, and we will remain bound by blood and secrecy. Death will come to he who speaks. We will keep their lifespan short and their minds weak while pretending to do the opposite. We will use our knowledge of science and technology in subtle ways so that they will never see what's happening. We will use soft metals, aging accelerators, and sedatives in food and water, also in the air. They will be blanketed by poisons where they turn. The soft metals will cause them to lose their minds to find a cure from our many fronts, yet we will, find, we will, yet we will feed them more poison. The poisons will be absorbed through their skin and mouth, and they will destroy their minds and reproductive system. From all this, their children will be born to death and will conceal information. The poisons, the poisons will be, be hidden, hidden in everything that surrounds them and what they drink, eat, eat breathe, and wear. We, we must be ingenious in dispensing the poisons so they can see far. We will, we will teach them that the poisons are good with fun images and musical tones. Mm. Those they look up to will help. We will enlist them to push our poisons. Mm. They will see our products being used in the film and will grow accustomed to them and will never know their true effect. When they, when they give birth, we will inject poisons into the blood of their children and convince them that it's for their health. Mm. We will start early on when their minds are young, we will target their children with what the children love most, sweet things. When their teeth decay, we will fill them with metals that will kill their minds and steal the future. When their ability to learn has been affected, we will create medicine that will make them sicker and cause other diseases for which we will create yet more medicine. We will render them docile and weak before us by our power. They will go depressed, slow, and obese. And, and when they, they come, come to us for help, we will give them more poison. We will focus their attention toward money and material goods so that they so they many so they many never connect with their inner self. We will distract them with fornication, external pleasures and games so that they may never be one with the oneness of it all. Their minds will belong to us and they will do as we say. If they refuse, we shall find ways to implement mind altering technology into their lives. We will use we will use fear as a weapon. We will establish the governments and establish offices within, and we will own both sides. We will always hide our objective, but carry out our plan. They will perform the labor for us, and we shall prosper from their toil. Our families will never mix with theirs. Our blood must be always pure, for it is the way. We will make them kill each other when it suits us. We will keep them separated from the oneness by dogma and religion. We will control all aspects of their lives and tell them what to think and how. We will grow them kindly and gently, letting them think that they are by themselves. We will foment animosity between them through our fashions. When a light shall shine among them, we shall extinguish it, ridicule their death, and shall receive the best. We will make them rip each other's hearts apart and kill their own children. We will accomplish this by using hate as our ally, anger as a friend. The hate will blind them totally, and never shall they see that from their conflicts we emerge as their rulers. They will be busy killing each other. Wow. They will bathe in their own cool. body, blood and kill their neighbors for as long as we see fit. We will benefit greatly from this, for they will not see us, for they cannot see us. Wow. 
We will continue to prosper from their wars and their deaths. They shall repeat this over and over until our ultimate goal is accomplished. We will continue to make them live in fear and anger through images and sounds. We will use all the tools we have to accomplish this, the tools will be provided by their labor. We will make them hate themselves and their neighbors. We will always hide the divine truth from them. They were all one. That they were all one. This must never, this, this they must never know. They must never know that a man's color is an illusion. They must always think that they are not equal. Drop by drop, we will advance our goal. We will take over their land, resources, and wealth to exercise total control over them. We will deceive them into accepting laws and steal the little freedom they will have. We will establish a money system that will imprison them forever, keeping them and their children in, je in debt. When they shall band together, we will accuse them of crimes and present a different story to the world, for we shall own all the media. We will use our media to control the flow of information and their sentiment in our favor. When they shall rise up against, we will crush them like insects, for they are less than that. They will be helpless to do anything, for they will have no weapons. We will recruit some of their own to carry out our plans. We will promise them eternal life, but eternal life they will never have, for the for they are not us. The recruits will be called initiates and will be indoctrinated to believe false rights of the passage to a higher realm. Members of these groups will think that they are one with us, never knowing the truth. They must never learn this truth, but they will turn against us. For their work, they will be rewarded with earthly things and great titles, but never will they become immortal and join us. Never will they receive the light and travel the stars. They will never reach their higher realms, for the killing of their own kind will prevent passage to the realm of enlightenment. This they will never know. The truth will be hidden in their face, so close they will not be able to focus on it until it's too late. Oh, oh yes, yes, so grand the illusion of freedom will be that they will never know that they are, uh, they are our slaves. When all is in place, the reality we have created for them, the reality we will have created for them will own them. This reality will be their prison. They will live in self-delusion. When our goal is accomplished, a new era of domination will begin. Their minds will be bound by their beliefs, the beliefs we have established from time. But if they ever find out they are our equal, we shall perish. This we must never know. Oh. If they ever find out together they can vanquish us, they will take action. Unity. We must never ever find out what we have done. For if they do, we shall have no place to run, for it will be easy to see who we are once the veil has fallen. Whoa. Our actions will have revealed who we are, and they will hunt us down, and no person shall give us shelter. They're scared, this man. This is a secret covenant by which we shall live the rest of our present and future lives, for this reality will transcend many generations and lifespans. This is a secret covenant. This is why it's so important to learn about this, because when you learn about this, you create a life outside of the system. When you're aware of it, you can no longer be controlled. When you know what they want to do, you no longer fall into the traps from health, money, um, empowerment, purpose, higher vibrations, the music that you listen to, the food that you're eating, the things that you consume, the video games, the porn, all of this is all a distraction to keep you easily controlled. And once you know when you change that, exactly, exactly like, like I said, said they, they fear it. Because yeah. the more of us that rise up and are aware of what's, what's happening, happening, the more, the more they, they lose their control, control, which is exactly, exactly what they don't want. Mm. And this is why we're recreating what the generation is going to look like. And this is why we're all waiting, waiting for the uprise, because we know that this entire plan is going to come up. KTC, that means keep the cold. Enjoy Shabbat, chilling in my room. It's Clan Ross at your front door. They gonna pay their way to Nasdaq go. Montezuma for the free throw. Nipsey Hustle let them wings grow. He gonna hit us with a free flow. <laughs> Hitting Crenshaw in that green low. Press the power. Nip the great man and uh we gonna keep the greatness flowing, man. The down we flow flowing, and just know they talking Georgia. We talking Georgia. They need to get us in their frequency to affect us, right? So this is what they've been doing by demoralizing us, and you know all this silent weapons for quiet wars. You also have to real take the wheel, but us being aware of the spell takes away the effect of the spell. It's the awareness, it's the observation. We observe Hawa, right? We have to seek Hawa. We have to seek the code. We observe 
our our restoration. You know, to be in cold is to be restored. It's to return. <laughs> For the children of Israel shall sit solitary, right? But afterwards, you shall return. It's your restoration, it's your water, it's your mam sauce. You got to seek a while. That is the observation. You must observe the law, meditate on the law, right? Observe to do everything the law is asking us to do. Keep the code. The observation breaks their spell. And you see, this shit is real. Seek the code. Then you can seek Con David. <laughs> then we say, who oh who is Preston Child? Hey, we on a war path, man. We on a war path. Call me Hano. Press the 123, my love. Easy as ABC, man. <laughs> I left but God, man. That strong power enters the house and you start to walk. The gum is the, the movement, the walking is the tribing up. We start tribing up when that strong power enters our house, man. And the house David is forever, man. The water for surfing the wave and the 103rd installment of the Press of John investigation. Allow wa, allow wa, allow. <sighs> Shalom for the Hakka Allah.